No. Oh, oh excuse me. Uh, the butler said to come right in. Oh, Miss Delacchia. I thought I had seen the last of you at, uh, at the trial. You don't know this lady, do you? <clears throat> well, of course, you wouldn't know her. Uh, it was her office had you locked up in Mountain View at the same time she was trying to prosecute me for a murder I didn't commit. Look, I don't blame you for feeling the way that you do, but there's something that the two of you should know. Well, I think it's actually a little late for apologies. No, so please, what you... I'm trying to tell you is that there's been a breakout at the prison hospital and Tracy James has escaped. What? Not only that, Thomas Stickley has escaped with her. Is this your idea of some kind of a joke, Mr. Abbott, or something like that? Please, I know how it must sound oh, to you. Oh, do you? Do you just enjoy being cruel and insensitive, spreading rumors around that my father is still alive? But what if it isn't a rumor? <laughs> what are you saying? My father was killed by Aida York and enemy agents. Yes. They killed him. Yes, everyone knows that story, That's but... not a story. That's what happened. Did you call me in here to bring up a lot of painful memories? Cassie, I'm not trying to hurt you. Just the opposite. Now, if what I heard about in Europe turns out to be true... It's not true. It can't be true. He was pronounced dead by a very well-respected doctor here in Landview. Do you think Larry Wolock would lie? No, of Do you think not. I'm lying? Now, I don't know where you heard all these lies. Cassie, you're a smart girl. Now, you know I can't reveal my sources. Huh. So there's more than one. Cassie, your father was the topic of conversation among reporters in every cafe in Paris. Now, some say his death was the tragic result of a Cold War while others say that uh, he didn't die at all. Well, some people, like, just love to gossip. Cassie, this is not just gossip. Now, when someone's killed, there's usually a body. But in your father's case, the body somehow ma managed to disappear from, from the morgue. Now, is that just a rumor, too? Oh, wait a second. I, why are we going over all this? Why can't you just let the whole thing go, all right? I'm sorry, I can't. It's my job to follow a lead wherever it takes me. Oh. Now, since I'm back in Landview where the alleged murder happened, so that's I've got to it, follow huh? the story to yes, the end. Yes, you reporters talk about your ideals and your integrity. All you really care about is selling your damn paper, right? What I care about is the truth, and I'm going to find it with or without you. Oh, no, you're not, because you are not going to get away with this. You are not going to sell that story if it's the last thing I do. Tracy, I am telling you, they are not worth killing. They're worth it, believe me. All right, revenge is sweet, I will grant you that, but freedom, baby, that is the sweetest. Freedom. You know, I can't be free until I pay them all back. But they are paying already, baby. Clint, Vicky, and all the rest of them. You know, they are having trouble sleeping, worrying about what you might come up with. Mm, well, they should be worrying. Yeah, right. So why don't we just let them keep right on worrying, you know? Let them wonder when you're going to come sneaking in the back door and stick a knife in them when they're half asleep, huh? Yeah, that would be some kind of punishment, Ooh, no wonder. Oh, baby, that is the <laughs> best kind, because that is the kind that just goes on and on forever. <laughs> Meanwhile, you and I, we will go away. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Between the two of us, we got brains talent and mm, imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, this dump of a town don't deserve us. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, then what are we even talking about it for? Come on, we'll get us a car, we'll hotwire it, we'll be out of old Landberg before you know it. <laughs> oh, Stick, yeah. so tempting. Okay, baby, then come on. I just don't like to leave a job unfinished. See what I want is to see them die. One by one. Tracy, even if we could bump them off one by one, do you have any idea how long that might take? Months, I know. Yeah. I've been considering it. Yeah, but have you been considering what the cops will be doing while we are doing it? They will be closing in on us. We will be getting closer to the electric chair. Well, I know you're right. When you're right, you're right, All Stick. All right, I knew you could see it my way. I do. Okay, that's more like my little Tracy. Hmm? All right, I'm going to tear off this list right now. Go ahead. Now you are talking. Yeah, I've memorized it all anyway. You know what? You are right. We shouldn't be waiting around here. Waiting to peg off each victim one at a time. You know what we should do? What we need to do. 
is to figure out a way of getting them all in the same place at the same time, you know? Just like... The police gave chase, of course, but by the time they sealed the exits, Tracy and Stick had already vanished. That's just wonderful. They're out there now somewhere together. It's not bad enough that the one of them has, has escaped now, but they're, they're, they're together. There's for nothing God's... to worry about. Nothing to worry about? Those two people have one thing in common. They would both dearly love to see me dead. Well, I've already instructed the police to put a watch on this house. Yes, and Asa has this place crawling with guards as it is. Darling, there were guards all over the prison hospital. They didn't seem to make much difference, did they? There's one thing about Tracy and her own sick, perverted way she is brilliant. And if she makes up her mind to something, obviously no one can stop her. Honey, if they've got a brain between the two of them, the first thing they'll do is grab a plane or a train or a pogo stick and get the hell out of town as fast as they can. I tend to agree with you, Mr. Buchanan. And just because of that, we're going to take every precaution. We? Uh, yes, the DA's office is working very closely with the police on this. Oh, is, uh, is that why you came over here personally, to deliver the bad news? Well, honey, you don't have to kill the messenger. Well, maybe not. Uh, not if that's the only thing she came over here to deliver. Was there anything else uh, that you stopped by for, Mr. Lackian? You don't like me very much. No, I don't like you very much. I don't like being uh, uh, tried in court for a murder I did not commit. Can you blame me? No, hmm. no. And you're right, I did come here about something else. It involves Tina Lord. Tina? <laughs> Well, that wasn't enough. You had to bring up her name, too. Huh? Wait, wait, I want to hear this. What about Tina? Well, I want you to understand that I'm here in an unofficial capacity. I am not Tina's attorney. I'm just somebody who would like to help. Help Tina, no doubt. No, everyone concerned. Now, Tina has asked my advice on disputing the Lord estate. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to say that she's going to take my advice. Oh, good. Well, in that case, I hope you told her to quit her claim and move out of my house as soon as she can. I'm afraid not. However, Tina is more than willing to offer you an out-of-court settlement. Settlement? Hmm? Yes. Not only that, she's going to give you a, a, quite a generous amount of money, and all you have to do is abandon the claims to Landfair and the Lord Estate. <laughs> <laughs> The latest on the mid-air explosion aboard TWA's Flight 840 on ABC's World News Tonight. This is how you help all concerned by coming here and demanding that I give up my home? Please, don't misunderstand. I'm simply... Oh, we understand just fine. We understand just fine. I'm just relaying a message. I'm not making a demand. Oh, well, in that case, you can just turn right around and relay a message right back to Tina. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. One word. Nuts. 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 You heard her. Nuts. Nuts. We are not giving up any any claim to uh, land fair or to the Lord Estate. Well, very well then. I'll just relay that answer to Tina. Now I want you to remember I'm just an unofficial representative. Uh huh. Mr. Lackian, you are an expert at protecting yourself, aren't you? I think it's called playing both sides against the middle, isn't it? Vicky, if I may call you Vicky, I knew I was risking a fight by coming here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but Tina's money made it worth the risk, it's right? It's not the money. I also had another reason for coming, and that was personal. I wanted to apologize. I think I already told you. I think it's too late for that. Yes. Besides, my uh, father said that you stopped by once before to offer your uh, regrets about the trial. Well, that was secondhand. And I think the least that I owe you, Clint, is a personal apology. Isn't that a little unusual, apologizing for doing your job? Well, my job tells me I have to stick to the letter of the law, and that's why we prosecuted Clint with everything that we had. Well, you, uh, you did that all right. I have the scars to prove it. Oh. I can't apologize for working hard. But I'm sorry that you had to go through the ordeal of a trial and conviction. Yes, we were all a bit peeved about that, especially since you had to help convict an innocent man. Well, nobody was more happy than I was when Clint was fully exonerated. Oh, well, I can think of one or two. <laughs> well, at your work at the Banner, Clint, I'm sure that you've had to pursue a story that you didn't want to do. Well, the same thing happens to an assistant district attorney. That, that's true, yes. But, of course, when we're wrong, we print a retraction. How do you bring a man back from the dead? I admire the way that you stand up for your husband. I just hope that the man I grew to admire during the trial can find in his heart some way to forgive and forget. Well, actually, I, uh, I admired you, too, Mr. Delacchio. Although grudgingly, of course. Of course. Not that I like being... Uh, raked over the coals, but you were only doing your job. Oh, 
Thanks, you're too kind. You know, I've run across quite a lot of individuals while I was prosecuting them, but they have never shown the, the strength and passion that you showed on the stand. Strength and passion? Yes. Well, I don't know about that. No, no, really. You, you were so convincing and compelling in your own defense that I was stunned when the jury brought back that verdict. <laughs> yes, well, so was I, but, uh, well, I guess it's all behind us now. Oh, I hope so. And I hope you won't hold this against me, the trial, I mean. Well, what can I say? Apology accepted. Thank you, Clint. Vicky. Don't bat your big brown eyes at me, sister. I'm immune. Uh, I beg Vicky. your pardon? <laughs> My husband might be perfectly willing to let you off the hook, but I'm not. You don't have a conscience, Mr. Lackey, and you have a career. And I think that you would be quite willing to do just about anything to further it, including letting an innocent man fry in the chair. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Cassie, why do you want me to drop the story? I don't have to explain myself to you. But it's almost as though you don't want to believe that your father's alive. He's not alive. He cannot be alive. But what if there's a chance that he is, as remote as it may be? I mean, aren't, doesn't that excite you? No, it doesn't. It hurts me. It hurts me because you're, you're touching a very, very deep wound. A wound that could be easily healed if your father isn't dead. Now, can't you accept that as, a, as at least a possibility? No I, no, I can't. Do you want to know why? Because David Rinaldi did not just die, he was murdered by enemy agents. According he to was considered a traitor reports. in his own country. Do you know what it's like living your life out as the daughter of a traitor? I'm sure it's been very hard on hard? you. Hard? It's not just been hard, it's been agonizing. I loved my father very dearly, despite his failings and his mistakes. But when I think about the way he died, when I think about his death, it tears me up. Do you realize that? Something tells me that you're tougher than you think. After all, you're not just David Rinaldi's daughter. You're Dorian Lord's, too. Yes, that's right, I am. And if she were here, she would beg you to let my father rest in peace. I'd be willing to if he were really dead. Oh, I see. You know, you really don't care about my father or about me, do you? You just, you, you just, you pretend to care about David Rinaldi, but whether he's alive or not doesn't really matter to you. All you're really concerned about is your, is your damn paper. Very good. Very good. Now, your mother's taught you very well. You know, now, you're, you're not just cruel she is. and insensitive. You just love to watch people suffer, don't you? I enjoy a good performance. <sighs> and the more you protest, the more I know I'm onto something. Oh, no, you are only on to lies. That's all you're onto, and you're not going to get away with it. Look, you can't stop me from falling. Yes, I can. I can do a lot more than you think I can. Now, hold on here, I okay? I don't have to hold on. I don't have to listen on. to you anymore and listen to you enough. There's no reason why you have to get away with this story, and I'm not going to let you get away with it. Away! Okay. Tracy, listen to me. Look, don't talk me out of this stick. Oh, would I do that? Mm -hmm. Kid, I know when a lady like you makes up her mind, there is no turning back. All right. So then you are either for me or you're against me. Baby, I am with you. But if we are going to start lining up all the people on that list and knocking them off all in one place, there is going to have to be some very heavy planning going well, on, I've you know? Well, I've thought about all of that, all right? Now, do you know the story of the little tailor? Or is that the one where the little baby bear finds somebody in his bed? <laughs> no, it's a story of a little tailor who blows away seven giants with one blow. Seven, huh? Oh, yeah, but that is just a fairy tale. No, you can learn a lot from fairy tales, Stick. You can learn how to throw a witch in an oven. You can learn how to punish just evil stepmothers. And you can learn how to kill seven giants with one blow. What was that? Was what? No, there's, some, there's a sound. Somebody's out there. Are you sure we got to go inside? You know, I'm getting a pain in my heart just standing out here. We talked it about it on the phone, Clover. This, uh, even though this place is on a block, I want to make sure you get a fair price for it. Yeah, I just want to sell it and be done. All right, just open the door. We'll check the inventory. As soon as we're through, we'll wash our hands with a backstreet bar. Put that away. Now, come on. Oh, come you. on. I've got everything. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm positive I turned it off when I left. Yeah, you're so positive like we're going to make a profit. 
I'll tell you something. If this electric bill comes in, I'm going to hand it to you, honey. Oh, come on. You want to argue about the light bill or you want to appraise the property? Well, let's look it over. I'll tell you something. It's kind of weird to be in here with, you know, nobody else here being alone. I wouldn't think that would bother you. The way business has been lately, I figure you've been here alone a lot. Thank you very much, Asa. Go ahead and rub it in. No, face it. We had a chance to make some money. You let it slip through your hands. And now at least, maybe we make a little by unloading this place. Yeah, well, what about that asking price? You think that's fair? No question. Very fair. Whoever buys it. The price is too low, honey. About $10,000 too low. Oh, well, see, I just didn't want to price it out of the market. Yeah, but look at the improvements you made around here. Take this bar, for instance. Yeah, you're right. You know, you don't see an old-fashioned bar like that every day, do you? That's priceless. You know, you put your feet on that brass rail, and you get more than a drink. I tell you that, you get truly exciting things happen to you. Yeah. Boy, AC, you know, I wish I had one drop of your business sense. I truly do. And you're right. I, I did let the chance of a lifetime just slip right out of my hands. Yeah, you only learn that by experience. No other way, Clover. Well, I wish I could read a book instead. Experience hurts. <laughs> you know, there's someone out there that could teach you a thing or two. Take Tina Lord, please. Oh, boy, Tina. Boy, she does manage to land on her feet, doesn't she? That's not the only thing she has in common with an alley cat. She claws, she scratches, doesn't give a damn which way the fur flies. You almost sound like you admire her. I can't stand her. <laughs> she does have guts. Yeah, some people might just call a nerve. You know, I heard about this party she's throwing tonight. Can you believe the gall? She is spending Vicky and Clint's money to throw a welcome home party for Richard Abbott like Land Fair is her home in the first place. Well, at least you can be confident that nobody would show up for that thing. See, that's it, Clover. The whole damn town's invited. To make matters worse, Clint and Vicky have accepted. Why did they do that? Do not ask me. Just the thought of Vicky and Clint and their friends being greeted by Tina Lord at Land Fair. I tell you, it's enough to make me want to Burst the blood vessel. Well, don't do it here, because I just mopped the floors, all right? <laughs> look, please, look, I'll stop talking about Tina. You stop talking about the Backstreet Bar. That is the fairest deal you've ever offered me. All Come right. on, I've seen enough of this place. Me too. I know, this. I'm with you, partner. Let's beat it. That was close. I thought I was going to have to knock them off. And that would be a waste of bullets, right? Because neither one of them is on our list. Am I right? Tracy? Oh, no. I've seen that look before. What are you thinking? Vicky, I was only trying to say... That's that all right. I heard every single word that you said, and I caught every little nuance as well. Uh, furthermore, I have to tell you that Frankly, I agree with you. My husband is a rare blend of kindness and trust, among other things. But that's all I was trying to tell him. Very yeah. well. I, however, am a very different kind of blend. I'm not nearly as trusting or as kind, especially where Tina and her flunkies are concerned. Uh, Clint, just tell your wife. No, 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 no. Don't talk to him. Talk to me. Better yet, talk to Tina. I think you should turn around and go straight back to Tina and tell her not to bother to have you do her dirty work for her anymore. As long as there is a land fair, it belongs to me and family. Is that plain? Yes. Very well. Then we don't need to waste any more of your valuable time, Mr. Lackey. And by the way, my name is Mrs. Buchanan. You can find your way out, can't you? Mrs. Buchanan? Miss DeLackey. Goodbye. <laughs> If I hadn't seen that with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. Seen what? You. You, honey. Never before has my, my honor been defended with such fire and determination. I'm really quite flattered. You're flattered easily today, aren't you? Oh, come on. Such passion and strength. So compelling in your own defense. I do hope you won't hold it against me. <laughs> the trial, I mean. <laughs> you think she fooled me for one minute? Is a bean green? Oh, come on, honey. I saw right through her. You were looking hard enough. I was looking at you with admiration. <laughs> I mean, the way you took her on was like... Like, uh... Like Nikki! No, it was like the woman I love. You are the one with uh, passion and strength. And I don't care where it comes from. Nikki, Vicky, wherever. I just like the whole package. Mm. Well, you're not such a bad parcel. Yeah? Mm-hmm. 
woman in that case. But... No, that's not going to work. What's <laughs> not going to work? One little kiss is not going to get me to tell you what my plans are for tonight. You'll simply have to wait and find out along with everybody else. Really? Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll just wrestle it out of you. Oh! <laughs> You'll have to catch me first. <laughs> No message? No, nothing. Well, maybe that's good news. Maybe that means that Jenny didn't put an ad in the paper and she and David are safe somewhere. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, you still miss her, don't you? I'm sorry. Now, don't be sorry. I can't expect you to just forget about her. Brad, maybe you should face the possibility that she's forgotten about you. I don't mean that she's not thinking about you, but maybe she has no reason to send you messages. We had an agreement. Maybe she has what she needs with David. I'm talking about Jenny's safety as well as David's. Are you? Or are we really talking about letting go here? You know me pretty well, don't you? I do know you pretty well. about the young ladies here in Landview, but since I've been gone, they've all gotten prettier. <laughs> Thanks. I could use a compliment these days. You're not too bad yourself. Yeah, I was a little worried about this meeting, though. I didn't want anybody to know I was in town, and now three people do. Why did Ace want us to get together? Because we've got a crisis on our hands, and his name is Richard Abbott. The ambassador's assassination... You dare hang up on me! I'll Where do you get off? Back. Where the hell do you get off ever hanging up on Ace of Buchanan? Don't people do that to you all the time? Abbott, you're in town one day. You've caused me more trouble than you are worth. Right now, I'm trying to get out your newspaper. Not the Rinaldi story. I gave you an order. Obey it. I told you I wasn't going to put it in tomorrow's edition. No edition ever in your lifetime. Man, oh man. I'm onto something hotter than a race car radiator, aren't I? Sweetheart, the boys are not feeling badly. They're just curious. Heaven knows I have put them through a lot, and they've come through wonderfully. But I really don't know how to answer them on this one. Well, they're... Mommy, why is Aunt Tina living in our house? When are we going home? Honey, they're not crying about it. They're fine. They're fine. Maybe I'm projecting because I'm crying to go home. And instead, we are going to land fair as guests at a party. Look, we will be back in our home very soon. I know. It's going to take every ounce of my resolve tonight not to pitch Tina out on our <laughs> golden earlobes. Great. Little Nell tossed out into the cold, huh? That's right. I could just see the headlines. Poor. Poor Tina. <laughs> Did I hear my name? I told Adam I knew where the living room was. Uh, hello? Tina. To what do we owe this extremely dubious honor? What'd you do, find another secret document that entitles you to Ace's house, too? Look, if I could have stopped off at the florist and bought an olive branch so I could come in here waving it, I would have. Come on. I'm tired of this feud between us. Wouldn't you like to just put it all behind us? I know I would, and I know you will, too, once you hear my offer. Yo, Rob, shift's over. Mm -hmm. Overtime's over. Coming to us to Elmo's? Come on, grab your jacket. Let's roll. Come on, it's a live band. Well, come on. If we don't go soon, I mean, we won't get a table. Lisa, you get the feeling we're talking to a tree? Mm -hmm. Rob, are you okay? Do you, you know who I just talked to on the phone? I just talked to the manager of the Burning Inn. I mean, my Burning Inn, right? Mm -hmm. I own the place now, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this guy says to me, hey, I had plans to quit, you know, and then your mother died, and out of loyalty to her, I thought I'd stick around. But now, since you're taking care of it, I gotta go. Oh, great. Oh, you mean immediately? I mean, like, yesterday, immediately. What am I gonna do? I gotta go to classes, I gotta work here. I, my days are full. I can... How the hell am I supposed to run a hotel at the same time? Oh, gosh. Oh, you could. I can never sleep again. I don't know. I guess <laughs> the thing is, is, like, to to get a part-time guy, you know, to come in to, to work the place until I find a full-time manager. I... 
call an employment agency in the morning. How about that? Josh, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it's as easy as that. I mean, what if I get somebody who just runs the thing right into the dirt in two weeks? I mean, I wouldn't know the difference until it was done. But you must have learned something from your mom about uh, it. Come on. Yeah, your dad. He used to own a string of hotels, yeah. right? But I didn't listen to that word they said. I wasn't interested in that. Well, maybe you listen more than you realize. Well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? Well, look, why don't you just forget about it for tonight? Start fresh tomorrow and come out with us. Yeah, come on. Have some fun. Okay. It can't hurt. Is Cassie going to be there? Uh, I have no idea, Rob. Yeah, right. Well, doesn't make any difference anyways. We're going to run into each other eventually, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Look, why don't you guys go? Um, I'm going to call this sucker back up, and I'm going to see if I can't get him to stay. And if I can't, then I'll head over. If I can't, I don't know what, all right? Okay. All right, hope you can make it. Thank Good you. luck. We're going to save a seat for you anyway. All right, see you. Hi, yeah, it's Rob Coronel. Is Arnie there? Yeah, Arnie, hi. Yes, yeah, Rob. Yeah, look, look, um, is there any chance that you can just hang out for a little while? I mean, just, just till I find another manager. No, 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 no. No, just a couple of days, not a couple of... Okay, fine. You want to talk tomorrow? All right, tomorrow morning. Look, Arnie, man, it would be a real big help to me. I'll give you a bonus or something. Yes, I know that it, money doesn't mean that much. Okay, fine. All right, fine. I'll talk to you tomorrow then, okay? All right. Oh, Rob. Hi, Larry. Hi, I'm glad you're still here. Listen, I need some help. I want to move some files down to the basement. Larry, I cannot be your errand boy on top of everything else. Look, we're a family, so let's start acting like one. Look, it took all my courage I had to come here this evening. I should be at home. You know, with all my last-minute party preparations. Please don't let us stop you. Look, I just had this wonderful idea, so I dropped everything and came over here to talk to you. We have already heard it, Tina. Your pal, Maggie DeLackian, stopped by with, with uh, your offer, your generous offer of a settlement. And I'm sorry you didn't accept it. <laughs> Don't you think it's a shame that we have to settle everything in court? That is hardly our choice. Besides, aren't one of you going to thank me for stopping Stephen Domino? We... Look, I know I couldn't have done it without Richard, but... Well, you did hear about it, didn't you? Oh, yes, and we're very grateful that Domino didn't get out of the country with all of the Lord assets. But, you know, that's just another example of your greed, Tina. If you had hired a respectable attorney in the first place, maybe he would have tried to steal everything that belongs to Vicky. You know, our father, Victor Lord, trusted me to run the Lord estate if Vicky should ever become mentally ill again. And she did, and I am. And we are fighting again, which is not why I'm here. Tina, quickly, in as few words as possible, what do you want? I'm here to make you an offer, one which you are really going to like, because you must know by now that you're just in the way here. We are? Pamela and Ace are trying to repair their marriage. They need privacy. <laughs> this mansion has 34 rooms. We have all the privacy we need. But don't let me stop you. You Wait go a minute. on. If you're leading up to offering us the West Wing, I think you can forget it. It's out of the question. Oh, yes, no, speaking of work. privacy. No, it would never work. No. Oh, then you're going to give us our house back. You know, there's just no way to negotiate with you, is there? Look, I am here out of the goodness out of my heart, and because I love you two so much, I'm here to offer you the carriage house to live in. You're on to nothing, boy. Nothing but the story of a dead man you refuse to leave in peace. Poor Cassie comes over, crying her eyes out about this. Yeah, I talked to Cassie. She was pretty upset. What is your problem? You know, any feelings? Or maybe that's it. Maybe you belong to the National Intruder with the rest of that scum. And since when does Ace, if you can, and care more about people's feelings than money? Now, when you called me in Paris, and since I've come back to town, all you talked about was the banners drop in circulation, right? Right, you're a bright boy. Raise the circulation somewhere else, not by raising the dead. But I don't think David Rinaldi's dead. That's the whole point. Now, if you'd let me put some reporters on it and follow it through... You do that, boy, and you're out. You know, reporters learn along the way that when people overreact, there's usually a hidden reason. Let me tell you something. You have never cared about anyone or anything in this town. You come back, your first act, cause pain. Look, it's obvious to me that there's a hidden reason for your temper and Cassie's. Have you listened to any damn thing I've been saying? Look, if you or Cassie would just level with me, I'd probably drop the story. As long as there was a good reason, of course. So why don't you just tell me the truth, Asa? 
Why do you want me to kill this story? All right. You've got a reputation as being a very intelligent young man. Maybe you'll listen to reason. I'm killing the story because the man is already killed. His family has been through enough. I don't want to suffer anymore. It is over. I am the owner. I'm your boss. Forget the Rinaldi story. Oh, if you mention Rinaldi's name at your welcome home party tonight, I will personally pull the mat right out from underneath your feet. Yeah! Briggs, it's Abbott. I got a new story for tomorrow's edition. Yeah, I'll get it to you as soon as I can. I'm writing it up right now. So Richard hung up on Asa. And then Asa decided he was going to go down to the banner to have it out with him. And I don't know if he'll be able to stop Richard. Great. Sounds like a case of overkill. The more you two scream, the more he thinks he's right. What else are we supposed to do? We'll start over. Try tears, you know. My father's dead. I can't go through this again. Brad, Richard, I really please. Brad, I tried that, and it didn't work. Well, as I recall, he uh, was an arrogant son of a gun, but he had a soft heart. Maybe he can get through to it, get him to kill his story. If not, I don't know. No, I'll do it somehow, I promise. Listen, you came over here because you saw those ads that Asa was running in the paper? Yeah, I was worried that some other foreign agents might see them and start asking questions. Meanwhile, David and Jenny are probably living happily ever after somewhere else, totally unaware. Is there any way to contact them? Yeah. Uh, Jenny and I made a pact that if something went wrong, if either one of us were in trouble, we'd contact each other through the personal column of the National Intruder. But she hasn't responded. I'm afraid maybe she's living in Europe, someplace where the intruder isn't that easy to get a hold of. Unless something has happened to them and maybe it's too late. Please, I'm enjoying myself crazy thinking about that one. But just be logical here. No news is good news. They're probably fine. I hope so. I've had enough tragic news happen to me lately. Why? What's going on in your life? Well, for one thing, Rob and I just got divorced. But I think it could work out so well. And, you know, I miss Kevin and Joey. I miss their laughter in the garden. And that treehouse looks so lonesome without them. Oh. Tina, since we are a family of four, and you are an adjunct of one, wouldn't it make a great deal more sense for us to live in the main house and you to live in the carriage house? Oh, yeah, it makes sense. Mm. But you've had the main house to yourself all these years. I've only had it for less than two months. Oh, honey, why are you even discussing this with her? It is absolutely ludicrous. Oh, darling, just a minute. No, this little tramp comes to town, ruins our lives, and she's not through yet. And she's not going to be through until she has taken every dime that Victor ever made Every dime you've ever made. Hell, when we're dead and buried, she'll probably have us dug back up to make sure we're not wearing any jewelry. Now, wait, just stop. Stop. Me. Both of you, stop. You know, Please. I don't even know why I bother. We are enemies, and that's all we're ever going to be. And whose fault is that? It's mine initially, but only initially. Tina, I am very sorry that I did not welcome you with open arms as my sister a long time ago. But you cannot justify everything you have said and done since then as a reaction to my behavior. It's not just your behavior it's our father's behavior too i got absolutely nothing from him no warmth no affection no love none of his wealth but it is now my turn vicky and there is nothing wrong with wanting that or going after it. and look at you huh you think it's fine for you to, to to offer me this little settlement huh but you are just so shocked that i might have the gall to offer you one and i'm the one who has to justify my behavior I hope you both will still come to the party. For Richard's sake, you'll be welcome in my house. Hey, just think of me as Santa. Christmas was going to get here before you. You know how long I've been waiting? Hey, relax, baby, okay? We still got some time. It's a little hard to get your hands on some of this stuff when the cops are all over the place, you know? Got everything I need? Yeah, you got your plastique, you got your wire, you got your battery, you got your uh, clock. Great. Everything it takes to make a bomb. 
Are you sure you can make this thing without blowing it up in our face, right? Sick, sick. I majored in bomb building in second grade. Now, what we gotta do is get over to land there as soon as possible and get into the secret room, okay? Right, then we make the bomb, then we set the timer, then we get out of there, right? right. We get rid of all the people we hate, and we head to Mexico. <laughs> When I left, you two were very much in love. What happened? We don't have time to talk about it right now, Brad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not going anywhere. Are you? I'm supposed to go to this party for Richard at Landfair, and uh, Tina's giving it. I don't really want to go, but I know it'll be a good chance for me to talk to him. Yeah, well, I'd hate for you to pass that up. Man, can you believe it? Tina and Landfair? Yeah, I know. So what about you? How are you doing? Well, we'll get into that later. Well, uh, come on. You and Rob, what happened? You heard that Laurel was killed, right? Yes, I did. I imagine Rob fell apart. Right? Well, everyone thought it was Ivan Kipling who did it, and I knew that it wasn't him, and I guess that's basically what started it. After that, we just got further and further apart. And you couldn't find your way back together. Yeah, I know that story by heart. Well, I mean, once you've lost something, it's kind of hard to recapture it. You can get it back if you want to. Yeah. I don't know if I do. I mean, part of me feels like a failure with Rob, but the other part of me is really angry at him. Well, you know, once you sort through those emotions, you might realize it is just pain, not anger, not hate. You'll be able to talk to each other. So you think that I should just hang out and not go out with anybody else? Well, no. I think you should date, you know, be available. And if you do fall in love with somebody else, you realize you and Rob made a mistake. I can't That's imagine all. myself falling in love with anybody else. Even though I know everybody does it hey, eventually. Come on. It's pain. That's all. You get through it. Life goes on. You were looking at the walking, talking, living example of that. <sighs> And you're a lot nicer than you used to be. Oh, really? Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want my advice. Do you want my advice? I'll listen to anything at this point. All right. Keep in touch. Maintain contact. Be friends. Or did you end on a bitter note? No, no. We parted friendly. All right. Well, you know, don't, don't keep too distant. Otherwise, it'll be harder to get back together. Well, give me a call now and then. Yeah. I always wonder how he's doing anyway. You know what's happened since then. Well, of course you do. You care about him. But I don't think he feels the same way. He loved you. I'm sure he still does. You know, he might bluster a little at first, but he'll be glad you called. And who knows, in time, it, it may work out. Thanks, Brad. You're the only one that's made me feel better since the divorce. Well, glad to be of service. Uh, but right now, I think the most important thing for you to do is get to that party and turn on the tears for Richard. See so if you can get him to kill that rumor about David being alive. Yeah, I know. Listen, I'm going to try anything that I have to, but I will take care of it. Don't worry. I've got some time before the party, and I think I might try to run into Rob accidentally. <laughs> hey, come on, Rob. Take it easy. Now, I know what your problem is. I'll bet you anything. It's the Vernon Inn, am I yes, right? Yes, it's the Vernon Inn. I mean, you talk to Mom about that place. There's got to be 53 problems a day over there. Yes, at least, sure. Well, how am I going to handle that? Well, Rob, you're, you're a bright young man, and you're good with people. And if Martha could make a deal out of it, and your mother could work it out, well... I guess it's like tradition in our family, huh? Think it's in my genes? Listen, if you want to try and make a go of it, fine. What about your wanting to be a doctor? Well, see, I wanted to ask you about that. What do you think? Do you think that maybe I can do both, you know, like work and go to classes and run the hotel? That's what I thought. Look, Rob, I am the one who got you involved in medicine, and you can understand where my sentiments lie. On the other hand, if you feel that you could be happy running the hotel, then go for it. It's, it's not that. It's just that, I don't know, a couple days ago, after Cassie and I got divorced, the only thing that I could think of that was good out of the entire ordeal was that I was free from everything. I, I, all I had was free time and, um... No responsibility to anybody but myself. And all of a sudden, I've got a staff of 30 people and 70 guests I've got to worry about. Come on. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. You won't even have to move the files. I can't, Larry. I gotta... I gotta... do something. I don't know what, but I gotta do something. Wait until tomorrow, Rob. Maybe contact some employment agencies. Put the whole thing out of your mind. At least let your subconscious deal with it tonight. Okay. Okay, you convinced me. I'll do that. I just don't want to get any coffee. I want to get a beer, I think. Hey, whatever, want. whatever. Okay. Oh, look, how, how have you been lately? Yeah. To tell you the truth, I'm really upset. I'm upset that Tracy is still out there running around. Yeah. I guess a bunch of heads over at the police department are going to roll over this one. Yeah, what scares me is that other heads are going to roll first. Of course I'm going to the party. You don't think she deliberately came here to upset us so we wouldn't go, do you? 
That's a thought. Darling, she's serious. That's what makes this all so sad. It's not sad, honey. I wouldn't exactly think about anything sad with Tina. It is sad that anyone's logic could be that convoluted. Well, that I will go along with. Okay, you two are taking over the banner right away. Vacation over. What happened, Pa? Hasn't happened yet, but I got a feeling in my bones is about to. Abbott and I are at war. He's not gonna back down. I'm gonna blow him out of the bunker. Hey, hold on a minute. Richard's only been at work for one day. What could he have possibly done in that space of time? I told him. I ordered him. I begged him, Vicky, not to release a certain story. He's gonna do it anyway. Well, that sounds just like the Richard I've always known and loved. Uh, what's the issue? Never mind. Just tell him you agree with me. It just might help. Paul, we can't, we can't agree until we know what the hell you're talking about. He heard some rumor in Europe that Rinaldi's still alive. David Renault. That's very interesting. Everyone was wondering about his body disappearing from the morgue. It's a very think. intriguing theory. What are you two saying? That you agree with Abbott? No, but as journalists, we probably think like he does. Well, stop thinking as journalists. Start thinking as human beings dealing with somebody's life. Whose life? I was afraid it was going to come to this. I suppose I'm going to have to tell you two. You know, trying to keep this story a secret from all over town will be all over town. Would you start making sense, please? Rinaldi is alive. He and Jenny are living together somewhere. Yeah, you can pick a lock slicker than any man I ever saw. 1986, Dick. Yeah. This is amazing. Well Good grief, she has redecorated this whole place. Thank God I brought my own flyers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see that secret room, man. <laughs> Mitch used to talk about it all the time. Vicki Buchanan talked about it. Lower your I mean, Nikki. What? Lower your voice. Oh, yeah. Jackson, I'll have tea for two, please. Hey, come a few bars. Sorry. <laughs> One life to live will continue in a moment. this opportunity to talk before the party. I mean, this is really going to be an opportunity for you to meet some of Landview's most important people. And Tina, I can't come. No, you're kidding. No, i got to go back to the office. I mean, Thomas Stickley and Tracy James are still running around somewhere. Oh, yeah, Bonnie and Clyde. Well, what's wrong with the police? Don't get me started, okay? I, I just came over here just to say I'm sorry I can't come and for you to have a lovely evening. Now, it's going to be difficult. Although I am not going to let Vicki and Clint spoil it for me. Tina, when we met in the driveway, did you have a few tears in your eyes? Well, I'm not going to cry any more tears over them, that's for sure. I'm going to be just as, in, as vindictive as they are. <sighs> you know, I had this really wonderful idea, right? And so I went over there all excited to talk to them. And what did I get? I got another tirade. I know. They gave me the same thing. Girls, girls, come on. There are 900 well, other rooms to I talk offered in. Them to live in the carriage house. I mean, how much more generous can I be, right? I mean, it's not like I offered them the, the gardener's shed or anything. Oh, this is making me nervous, Dick. Every time Tina starts talking about how abused she is, she never stops. What in the hell are we going to do, then? Maybe, I mean, what do you think? Am I wasting my time? Do I have a chance of winning this? Oh, yes. You have some chance, yes. But I wouldn't tell the post office that you're going to move in here permanently, quite yet. Why can't things ever go my way? Well, Tina, don't get down right before the party starts. Now, you've got you to gotta be up. You've got to look like you belong in Landfair. Yeah, I do. And you're right. So I'm just going to take my mind off of Vicki and Clint completely. And I'm just going to think of the wonderful party that I'm going to throw for Richard. Now, now we got a chance. You know, and I'm going to be just a smashing success at this party, and everybody here is going to think totally different of me, that's for sure. Why do I think this is a trouble? But then again, it could be good. <laughs> yeah, not the way my life's been going. Hello? Bettina, it's Richard. Oh, hi, Richard. It's wonderful to hear your voice. Is there something wrong? Oh, nothing to worry about. I'm just a little down at the moment. But as soon as you get home and I see you and the party starts, then everything will be all right. Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm not sure what time I'm going to be there. There's a crisis at the paper. Richard, there is a crisis in my life right now. You can't desert me, not for your own party. Whoa, slow down. 
Okay, I'm sorry. Now, just what is the problem at the banner? Well, it might clear itself up within an hour, and then again, it may take longer. Well, you won't be too late, will you? Uh, Tina, there's an off chance I might not make it at all. No! No, Richard, please, that's not possible. Look, I just don't know. But I wanted to warn you. Now, I'll do everything I can to get there, I promise. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for calling, Richard, and I, uh, I hope you'll be home soon, okay? Bye-bye. I think I'm gonna kill myself. I'm just gonna have to call the whole party off. Oh, no, you're not, Tina. You're gonna have that party if I have to force you at gunpoint. Well, Pa, this, uh, this story sure answers a lot of questions. Like why Jenny suddenly married Brad Vernon. And left town all of a sudden as well. You did stop the ads looking for her, didn't you? Yes. Uh, once I was convinced it was the truth. Well, who told you all this? Uh, we'll get into that later if I have to. The issue now is Richard. Uh, he's gonna follow the rumor. Well, sure. If he's investigating something, he's not gonna stop until he's got the answer. No, he's got a lot of determination. Well, that's why you two have to take over the banner before he starts. Hey, so that won't make any difference. He'll do it on his own. I think the only way now is, is if I go to him and ask him not to do it as a personal favor to Who the hell are you? Uh, the uh, name's Sherman. I'm a copy boy over at the banner. Oh, yeah, Sherman, we know you. What's up? Uh, Mr. Abbott told me to rush this over to Mr. Buchanan. It's a mock-up of tomorrow's edition, section C. Now there it is, black and white. Is David Rinaldi really dead? Is there a message for Mr. Abbott, sir? There sure as hell is. Which we will deliver later. Thank you, Sherman. Uh, sure thing. Old Abbott told me something. This would not be in tomorrow's efficient. Asa, you got him very angry and very curious. He's baiting you. Right, now, so how do we unbait him? What if he catches up with uh, David and Jenny? This is some story. Landview will be crawling with commies asking questions. Yeah, not to mention a lot of NSB agents. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going over there and throw him out on his No, nope, no, nope, Pa, no, you're not. Will you just calm down? Every five minutes, someone is going hysterical in this family. I mean, five minutes ago, it was me yelling at Tina. Tina was in my house? Oh, that's wonderful, sweetheart. Your father's really calm now. What the hell could she want here? She was very concerned about you and Pamela's privacy, and she offered Vicky and I to live in the carriage house. I can just deal with one snake at a time. Back to Richard. Uh, honey, do you think maybe you could uh, sway him on a personal basis? Well, I don't, I don't really see that we have any other choice. If I can do it in a way that doesn't make him more suspicious. Well, how, how about something like this? If, if, you know that losing Jenny was really rough, but at least now she's safe. And if he keeps pushing this thing, it's just going to be, you know, that kind of thing. Cause more pain, you mean? Yeah. I'll tell you what. He's going to feel pain if he doesn't back off. Oh, Paul, will you just relax? Huh? Think about the party. The party Tina Lord is throwing for Richard Abbott? All night I'll be wondering which one to throttle first. That is one hell of a party. <laughs> Look, all my plans and... Oh, no. Norman Coopern. Norman Coopern? Who's that? Maggie, he's a pianist. He is the pianist at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. Look, I, I, I paid a great deal of money to have him play here at this party, and now it's just going to be a very expensive private recital. Tina, I do not think that you should cancel. Now, my impression from that phone Get call is that he's going to be late, but he's eventually going to come. I mean, this whole party is for him. Yeah, the, the food, the liquor, the caterers. What? And no guest of honor, huh? It's going to be all over town, and everybody's going to think that I just made Richard up. Well, Tina, you're getting defensive again. You're right. Besides, I can't cancel right now. Because besides showing off Richard, I wanted to show off this wonderful decorating job. And at least my carpets and my new drapes won't desert me. Well, Tina, I'm very sorry I can't make it. But I've got to get back to the office. I know. Thanks for your moral support. If it for you, I think I would have caved in. Somehow I doubt that. Move, 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 move. Get her out of here. Close the door. Okay, get her out. In a few seconds, we'll get to the secret room. 
So, when I surprised Dad and came back to Landview, I thought I'd be surprising Carla, too. But they had already split. And Lisa, the man never goes out. Mm. I don't see how we'd have time in this town to do anything but work. Yeah, well, your dad owns a big pharmaceutical company, and he doesn't only work. That's not what Mom says. I don't know. It seems every night he's got some meeting or the other. Tell me about their relationship, your, your mom and dad. Oh, I haven't been home in a long time. I guess they're polite to each other, even loving. But I never saw them as the world's best romance, you know? I, I really admire Mom. I couldn't stay living with a man who spent 90% of his energy just making money. Hey, y'all. Oh, sorry. Hey, you're really right. surprised. Hey, man, does this mean all your problems are OK now? Nope, means I'm ignoring them. Oh. Let me see that. Oh, no, it hasn't started yet, just in time. <clears throat> Great. Waiter, wait, hey, can I get a beer or something sure. like that? Yeah, another round here, please. You got it. Say, Rob, I see a very attractive lady over there. Looks what? unattached, looks like your uh -oh. type. How would you know what my type is? I don't even know. <laughs> well, she's just small and dark, you know, a little bit like, a little bit like Cassie. Uh-huh. Exactly the type I don't need right now. Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay, moving right along. There is a six-foot Amazon. Okay, can I have your attention, oh, please? Oh, can I have your attention, yeah. please? How y'all doing tonight? Hey. Hey. How y'all doing? Woo. Good night. Let me tell you, you having a good time tonight? Yeah. No, yeah. oh, I said, are you having a good time tonight? Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. That is a crowd I've grown to know and love so well. Am I right one more time? Yeah. Just settle down here for a minute, settle down, because in about another minute, we're going to have one of the hottest rock and roll bands in the world to come along for a very long time. What are you thinking about? Nothing. I guess I'm thinking about David and Jenny and the fact they left town safely. Yes, finally, it seems like everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Look, I know you're sad about your dad. I guess you, of all people, would understand that, right? It's a little strange, isn't it, how everything kind of came together, everything so, so common with us. I mean, our father's leaving us like that. Maybe it's our fate. I couldn't have done it without you. What are we doing here? <laughs> I guess we wanted some quiet time in a quiet place. Well, I can think of a quieter place than this, like our bed. I have to twist my arm. <laughs> Put the phone off the hook. Lock the doors and all the windows and put the cat out and just have fun for three days. What do you say? I don't think we'll say anything. I think the only thing we need to talk about from now on is our future together. Let's go, huh? My children. If either one of you try to pull another trick on Erica and me, be sorry. And on General Hospital. You've got to change your mind and defend him. I don't believe Kevin. Please, I'm begging you, Jake. Please. Can Jake turn his back on a man charged with murder? All my children, General Hospital. Love it. We are on our way to the bar to talk to a friend. Yes. Wait, wait, wait a second. You don't have to leave because of me. I just came by to say hi. And we came to say goodbye. That's okay. Ciao. 
How you been? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you want a drink or something? Uh, well, no, I, I have to get going. I'm, uh, I'm going to a party for Richard Abbott tonight. Who's that? It's a long story, but he's Vicky's cousin. And um, Tina's giving it at land fair, so Vicky and Clint will be there and everything. Who are you taking for a date? Forget it. I didn't ask. I'm sorry. I'm not going. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. I didn't ask. Rob, you really think I would start dating other guys so soon? I mean... I would know. Well, I guess I'll be early. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say anything, okay? I know you've got to be in a, a lot of pain, like me. Okay. So how are you doing? Oh, uh, well, I'm, I'm not too bad. Uh... I'm a little panicky right now. My manager with the Vernon Inn just quit on me today and left me with the entire thing to take care of. Well, don't, you want, don't you want to be manager? Well, I don't know. I never considered it before. But see, I just thought that I was just going to, you know, sit back and just go to the bank with all the money. But now I'm in charge of everything. It's going to be pretty tough, um, you know, managing the hotel and staying in medicine together, don't you think? It's impossible, I think. Well, I think that maybe you should... What? I don't think it really matters what I think anymore, right? Cassie, I need all the friendly opinions I can get. Not that you ever listened anyway. Well, maybe now that we're divorced, I will. Didn't you get my message about my canceling? No. Well, if you're not going to go, I might as well, you know, just stay home. Oh, well, come on. Me and Clint and Vicky are going to be there. Yes, and they need our support. Our support. Yeah, I just don't want to leave the hospital tonight. Sweetheart, you are not the only doctor on duty. No, no, it's not that. It's just that this, this guy's stick and Tracy are out there. I'm afraid they might show up at the hospital. Oh, so you're going to run from floor to floor and protect the staff and all the patients. Honey, I'm sorry, and I, I want to tell you the truth without sounding sarcastic, but... Yeah, go on. The hospital will be a lot safer if you are not here. All right, you're right, you're right. I'm you're right, 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 all right. So we have to spend the evening with people we don't like. Yes, like Tina. Oh, yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, Landfair will probably be very safe, because I don't think Tracy or Stick would dare go back there. Well, I wouldn't bet on what Tracy might or might not do. Mm. Do you ever get tired of being so infuriatingly correct all the oh, time? Oh, honey, I can't help it when you're always wrong. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you what we'll do. We'll go out, I'll check out of here, go over to my place, I'll change, and then... Are we really spending a whole evening with Tina? Oh, yes, and Vicky and Clint. Because they need our support. Our support. Our support. Walk okay. this way. Tracy, it's almost 8.30. We still gotta make the bombing and get out of there in time. There's not gonna be enough time. If we can get in the secret room in the next two five minutes, we're gonna be all right. I don't want you hurrying while you're making that bomb. They're not they? gonna blow us up, Stick. Okay, look, now we are the victors in this world, not the victims. Oh, conquering Mexico is gonna be a gas with you, babe. Yes, I'm still here. Tina. Richard. Oh, you're here. I was just calling to try to find you out. Oh, uh, hello, he's here, but. Well, I'm so happy to see you. You know, I figured you must be at the banner, so I, I, I figured you had to be there somewhere. Yeah, well, the crisis just faded away. I hope it doesn't follow me to the party. Oh, please don't say that. We don't want a crisis right in the middle of it. Oh, everything will be fine. Stick. Move it. God, he might come up here. Let's get out of here. Well, it's time to get dressed. Richard, why do you keep looking at over here? Oh, I don't know. This room, it just feels creepy to me. What? You don't like the way I decorated it? Oh, it's not that. It's, uh... That secret room. I mean, I keep thinking someone's going to open that panel by mistake. I mean, it's so obvious to me now that it's not a real wall. I think you've been an investigative reporter too long. Why don't you just have the whole setup unhooked? Why should I? Because it's a creepy place, for one thing, that your father used to, to uh, do bad things in. You know, like spy on people. 
And, and what if one of the kids got in there by mistake and, and you couldn't find them? I don't know. I just don't like it. All right, I'll tell you what. Okay, why don't I have the electrician come over and he can just seal it up right away. I mean, even before the guests come. And that way, you'll feel better and so will Vicky. In fact, I think I'm going to make a point of telling her that I had it sealed just to get rid of all the bad memories. That would be a very nice gesture, Tina. And on that note, I think I'm going to go take a shower. Yeah. Oh, Richard. Wait. Uh, you know, I've been having kind of bad luck lately and everything. Are you sure this crisis isn't going to carry over into my party? Oh, it'll be here, all right. But I hope either one of them won't bother to... Uh... What? Oh, what, you invited people I don't know here? Asa Buchanan and Cassie Coronel are on your guest list, aren't they? Asa is perpetual pain in the neck in my life here. What's he doing to you? Hmm. He's trying to tell me how to uh, be editor of the banner. After hiring me to be editor of the banner. Very typical. Typical of Asa. I hope you're standing up to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, while he threatens to fire me and all. But I'm sure that Cass, uh, I'm sure that uh, Clint and Vicky will uh, back me up. I wouldn't count on it. I mean, I am a, a bruised example of the sort of help you can get from them in a crunch. Well, you don't look too bruised to me. In fact, you look awfully good from where I stand. Well, thank you. It certainly perked me right up. Good. So, can I take my shower now? Yeah. Oh. What was I gonna do? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jimmy, great you're there. Yeah, it's Tina Lord. Look, I have an emergency electrical situation here that I need to take, take care of. C could you come over right away? Jimmy, I know what time it is. Look, I am planning this really important party tonight, and, well, it has to be done immediately. I'll pay you triple overtime. Somehow I knew you'd say that. Uh, so I'll see you in a few minutes. It's nothing complicated at all. I just want you to, to sever the wires of the secret room. Jimmy, so what if I changed my mind? Just hurry, okay? Okay, bye-bye. No stopping. No talking. Just get into the room. All right, all right. It's open. It's empty. Bed. She spent so much money redecorating this place since around 10 o'clock. It's all going to look like the east side of Detroit. <laughs> this is Kathleen Sullivan. The latest on the investigation of the bombing of TWA Flight 840 tomorrow on ABC's World News This Morning before Good Morning America. Sunday at 7, 6 Central, a bizarre accident turns an average father into a superhero beyond his son's imagination. I Man on the Disney Sunday movie. Then Roy Scheider's the target in one of the greatest aerial duels ever on the network television premiere of Blue Thunder, the ABC Sunday night movie. Terry begs Jake to help her husband. Stay tuned for General Hospital following an ABC News Brief next. Mariette Hartley joins Merv today at 4. Darling, if you'd hold still, I could straighten it. I'm not the one that's shaking. You are. Oh, I know you're absolutely right about that. I really thought that I could go to this party tonight, just the picture of confidence. Having second thoughts? Second and third. I thought it would be so easy, just walk into Landfair as another guest. Well, Shake hands with Tina, give Richard a kiss, but as the time draws near, I... The plan. Just concentrate on the plan. I wish we'd never even come up with the plan. But you did, and it'll work. And we will give Tina a housewarming present she will never forget. Oh, yes, that we will. And neither will I. Forget it, ever. It's so underhanded, it's just not my style. Well, from what I've seen lately, honey, your, uh, your style is changing, and it's not exactly like Tina hasn't been asking for this. Well, you're absolutely right about that. 
When I think of the way she grabbed our house out, right out from under us, and then tried to offer us the carriage house on the estate in return, absolutely enrages me. Well, and that's why we're going through with the plan tonight. We're going to make that rage pay off. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, Richard, you look wonderful. Just like a guest of honor should. To compliment the perfect hostess and the perfect setting for a party. You really think so? Oh, you're a knockout. Uh, thanks. But I meant the room. I've worked so hard to try to put my own personal stamp on it. Oh, it's got Tina Lord written all over it. You really think so? Well, you know, I owe it all to you. I mean, this wonderful evening and the way I feel. I mean, it's all because of you. I mean, anybody who is anybody in Landview is going to be here tonight. Thanks, Steve. Tina, your life has always been in very capable hands. Your own. I wish you'd realize that. I'm learning. With your help. Listen, can I get you a drink or something? No, uh, no thanks. No, I think I'll wait till the joint starts jumping. <laughs> uh, I left this Sunday's editorial on my desk in the West Wing. If I've got time, I'd like to finish it up. Oh, of course. Go right ahead. I mean, the guests aren't going to arrive for a little bit. And uh, I'm going to go to the kitchen and check on the chef. <laughs> you mean you don't trust him? Oh, I do. But not for tonight. I mean, tonight is very important. We want to have everything exactly perfect. Why should we settle for anything less? All right. The library is now empty. We can make a run for the terrace doors and get out of here. I'm not finished yet. What are you building there, a nuke or something like that? You've been fiddling with that thing for a half an hour. I Ramona always said, if I'm going to do something, you better do it right. Yeah, but Aunt Ramona is dead. Just like we're going to be if we do not get out of here before that thing goes well, off. Just relax, Dick. Relax? Are you kidding me? Did you hear what Tina and uh, the Ken doll said? I mean, the guests are about to arrive. Then how are we going to get out of here, huh? You're watching this thing way, way, way too much. Ain't no wrong way. No wonder you landed in prison. Come on, Tracy, this is serious. We only got so much time, you know? Look, now you're making me nervous, all right? It's not smart to make someone nervous who's handling, you know, these uh, plastic explosives. Now, you want us to blow up right here and now, huh? ID, you're right, Captain. Yeah, I don't want to be right. I want to nail him. We had him. Too. Well, they might be so close. They might be coming back. Why don't we call in for a stakeout? Might as well. Of course, they might be miles away from here by now. I can't figure out why did they stay in town after they they broke out. Yeah, it's almost as if they deliberately stayed around to do something, huh? But what? Where? We gotta keep looking. We gotta keep looking. Under every table, every corner. Come on, Doyle, get at it. You say caviar is an acquired taste. I think I just acquired it. Miss Lord, our first guest has arrived. Miss Cassie Coronel. Hi, Tina. Cassie, don't you look lovely? Thank you. You really do, but if you know it's very original coming so unfashionably early. Well, actually, I needed to talk to you before the party started. Oh. Well, is Rob going to meet you later? No, maybe you haven't um, heard yet. Rob and I have gotten divorced. Oh, no. <clears throat> Cassie, I'm very sorry. I, I had no idea. I, I really am. But, you know, I've been so busy, what with Landfair and everything, I guess I haven't been keeping track of things. But you didn't have to come by early just to tell me that Rob wouldn't be joining us. No, actually, I came by to talk to Richard. Really? Well, where did you two meet? We just met today at his office. Oh. Well, surely you're not going to talk shop in this lovely outfit. The poor man won't be able to concentrate. <laughs> well, he's half expecting me. Could you tell him that I'm here, please? Sure. I'll just buzz Jackson. 
I beg your pardon, Miss Lord. Oh, Jackson, you must be psychic. That's better than just even being British. Oh. Uh, you have a visitor, madam. Another one. Well, Cassie, you seem to have set a trend, a trend of coming to parties early. <laughs> uh, not a visitor, not a guest, madam. A tradesman, the electrician, Mr. Malloy. Mr. Malloy. Well, it's about time he showed up. Uh, listen, Jackson, could you go up and tell Mr. Abbott that uh, Cassie is here to see him? Very good, madam. And uh, Mr. Malloy? I'll take care of Mr. Malloy. Yes, ma'am. Although I think his business is just going to have to wait now with the guests arriving. Now oh, that little baby is ready to blow. Yeah, well, so am I. You know, we still got to get that secret panel open, and we got to slip out through the library without being seen. Well, it was easier for us to get in here, wasn't it? Yeah, but the library was empty then. You won't even let me look at the TV monitor to see if there's anybody in there now or not. Oh, hey, poor cool. babe. Yeah. That make you happy, yeah. huh? Now you can look at any room in the house. You can look at the library, find out when it's clear. Good look. Cassie. Who cares? As long as she is standing there, we are stuck here with that bomb. You don't understand. Her being here makes this whole thing complete because now I have all my little ducks all in a row. See, because if there's anyone that I hate more than Vicky, more than Mimi, more than anyone, it is Cassie. Tracy, will you forget about the cupcake now, in the library? Land Tell me how. Now, blows up, that sweet little thing is going to go catapulting into oblivion along with everyone else. Yeah, along with us, you mean? How are we going to fuck up a Cassie? Oh, great. Look, that's great. Yeah, just what we need, a long and meaningful conversation. Shh, come on, man. Fuck it. What? Well, you think that's interesting or something? Tracy, we are stuck here with a ticking bomb. There's two live canary birds singing in the library. How in the hell are we going to get out of here? I feel like a damn fool. Hey, sir, you look very distinguished in your formal attire. Oh, I'm not talking about the monkey suit. I'm talking about that farce of a party at Lant there. I cannot go through with it. We game. all can and we will, and we'll all go together, and we will have a very interesting evening, won't we, sweetheart? Well, I don't know if I'd uh, use that particular word, but... I'll tell you one thing, I can make one hell of an interesting evening if I haul off and let Tina have both barrels. Now, Paul? Hey, sir, okay. come on now. Oh, wait a minute. I know you two have a reason for going that Richard lending his name to that catastrophe. But I just wish someone would tell me why old Asia should join in this foolishness. Well, I can think of one reason. Pamela, you look stunning. Yes, you certainly do. Doesn't she, Paul? I've never seen that dress before, have I? You don't like it. You're a vision, Pamela. Well, it's not every day that I go to my first major social event <laughs> in the arms of, I might say, a very handsome husband. Well, I didn't, uh, we didn't plan. I mean, uh, we never talked about it. I didn't think you'd want to come. Would you rather I didn't? No, no, Asa didn't mean that at all. No, you, no, Asa? no, no, of course not. What I mean is that you'd be the best damn thing at this farce of a party. Oh, Vicky, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so enthusiastic. It's just that I know this is going to be very awkward for you to... Oh, no, don't be silly. I don't blame you for being excited. And I think that you and Asa will be the envy of everybody there. Here, here. <laughs> that's very sweet of you. Thank you. Hell, that's not sweet. It's true. Give me your arm. Let old Asa escort you to your car. Thank you. Thank you. It makes me very proud. <laughs> we'll be right behind you. Oh, I'm glad that somebody's looking forward to this evening. You've been working on your father, haven't you? Oh, well, he can be, uh, he can be human when he wants to be, honey. I just hope that I can be inhuman when I have to be. Sweetheart, all you have to do is be your own beautiful self and just let Pete do the talking. You sure he'll be there? Yep, just spoke with him. He said that he'll be there at 10 o'clock tonight when, uh, when the guests are all assembled. 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. That's when the real fireworks begin. Shall we? Come on, Larry, admit it. We both deserve an evening out on the town. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't deserve to have to spend it at Tina's, though. Oh, come on, honey. Think positive. Well, Clint and Vicky are going to be there, and I figure we can drag ourselves there. Well, why do you think I'm going? Well, I thought maybe my company would 
be nice. Oh, come on, sweet. Hey, Mimi, you know I love being with you. You mean you didn't get sick of me in Tracy's basement? <laughs> I'm guessing yet. Okay, let's then uh, consider this a um, social obligation. Certainly, it's an I'm obligated to go because Clint and Vicky are going there. I don't understand why they said yes to this. Well, Richard is Vicky's cousin, right? Yeah, but for them to go as guests in their own home. Oh, but honey, she always puts other people first. She would never embarrass Richard by not showing up. It's that simple, isn't it? Yes. It's a really, you know, you, you've got quite a talent. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Well, look, I. I look at something from every angle, from so many different angles, I lose track of what I'm looking at. You know what I'm saying? Mm, sort of. You cut right through all the nonsense, you go right to the heart of the matter, and you make everything utterly logical. Hmm. Are you saying I'm simple-minded? <laughs> no, I'm not saying you're simple -minded. I'm saying you tend to make complicated things look simple. That's quite a gift. Well, thank you. I'm going to consider that a compliment, even though it might not be. It is, believe me. I do believe you. And you know, that is your gift, Dr. Wallach. You make it almost impossible not to believe you. <laughs> I wish we didn't have to go to a party tonight. I'm really having a better time just with you. Yes, yeah, so am I. I feel... Comfortable? Yeah, yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah. All that time that we were locked in Tracy's house there, I... Well, there was a time toward the end there, I thought, we may not make it. And I said, okay, I can accept that, not make it. I can accept it. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because I was there with you. You, you know what I was thinking? No, I'm not going to tell come you on, that. Come on, now. No. come on. All right, the truth, um, <clears throat> the truth is, I could never accept ending my life with you before I had a chance to live it with you. I guess we better get the check, huh? Yeah, it's a good idea. I don't want to miss any of the excitement at Tina's. So I just wanted to say that I'm sorry. Cassie, you don't have to do that. Yes, I do. I behaved like a child today in your office. You behaved like the daughter of David Rinaldi. And I know I touched upon a sensitive nerve when I brought up his death. I just... I mean, when you even suggested that he might be alive, I couldn't believe it. <sighs> yeah, so you said. I said a lot of things that I really regret. We all do that. I guess in your profession it's called, um, oh, I don't know, when you say things from time to time that you want to take back. Uh, they're like called school. retractions. Yeah, but I'm sorry, Cassie, I'm not going to retract my story on your father. No, I would never ask you to do that. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm very sorry that I even asked you to do that today. How come you changed your mind since this afternoon? Because I had time to think about it. Believe me, I, I know that your job is to run a good story, and David Rinaldi is a good story, even though he's not alive. Well, that remains to be seen. But it took a lot for you to come here and apologize. I want you to know I really appreciate it. I'm still very curious. I mean, I mean, where did you even hear these rumors? Well, I thought I told you, in Europe. Yes, but Europe is a very big place. Well, to be more specific, a ski resort in the Tyrolean Alps. Now, your father was seen skiing down the slopes very much alive. So that's it? Someone saw someone who may or may not have been my father skiing down some slopes at probably 40 miles per hour? That's what you're going to base your story on? I, I admit it's hardly conclusive, conclusive? but Conclusive? I... I don't even know how you can take that seriously. Oh, but I do. After all, David Rinaldi was an avid skier, wasn't he? My father was a very gifted and brilliant composer. He didn't have time for things like skiing. Really? And why does every biography on your father talk about his love for skiing? The cover-up continues, eh, Cassie? I'm not covering up anything. He never talked to me about skiing. Yeah, just like he never talked about enemy agents or uh, sneaking out of the country Listen, with a new identity. I am sure that you are a brilliant writer. And the story's going to be very good, but it's going to be fiction, not fact. You're a loyal and loving daughter, Cassie. I'm sure your father's very proud of you.
How many times do I have to tell you that my father is not, not alive? He's not dead. I know. But I got this thing called a bull detector. What is this, 2020? I want to see an empty room, and they are giving me the latest international gossip. What are you worried about? This bomb is not going to blow until 10 p.m. Now, I like watching Cassie. Being so good and noble makes her final moments all the more enjoyable. Yeah, well, her final moments are going to be our final moments, sister, if we don't get out of this room. Oh, boy, I hope the rest of the place hey, ain't lousy with people. Listen, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tina. He's that guy she's talking to. We don't look like one of her guests. Who cares? I want to take a cross-town bus. Why would I go through all the trouble to protect somebody that was... My question exactly. I'll tell you what's going on up there. I'll tell you exactly what's going on. What's going on is that they are in the library and we are not. Come on, Tracy, snap out of it. Earth to Tracy, baby. We have got to get them out of there so that we can get the hell out of here before they... I don't even want to think about it. Oh. Jimmy, don't you see? My party is about to start. And with all the people here, I can't have you running in and out of the secret room. It's okay by me. I still don't understand why you want me to undo the fine work I already done. Work? Work? Look, Jimmy, you overdid all the work. That's the problem. All I did was I wanted you to make the secret room a little bit more comfortable for me. Which I did. Wrong. What you did is turn it into an outpost for spying on everybody in the house. I did? Come on, Jimmy, don't try to deny it. I know you. When you get your hands on some little electronic gizmo, you just don't know how to stop. Yeah, that's true, but in this case... No, I... in this case, you went directly against what I asked you to do. Now, if anybody finds out about those, those TV monitors, those speakers, I'm oh. going to be thrown out of town. Wait just a minute. I do good work. No man or woman can say any different. TV monitors. I know I never did anything... Jimmy, the point here is, can you undo all the damage that you've already done? I'm a fine craftsman. You pay me to rewire, you can pay me to unwire. Well, yeah, but can you do it before my party's in full swing? 20 minutes soon enough? Yeah, but I can't have you running in and out of the secret room, not with all the guests in there. You show me where the stairs to the basement are. That's where your circuit breakers are. Uh, I can work my magic down there. And you can seal up the secret room? Tina, my fine lady, when I'm finished, even the angels in heaven won't be able to get into that room. Okay, okay, quick, quick, it's that way. Right down the hall, all right? Hurry. Well, miss, oh. are we ready? I don't know, Jackson. What do you think? Well, if I may say so, Madam is every inch the mistress of all she surveys. Thank you. Okay? Yes, sir. Let the party begin. Good evening, and uh, welcome to Landfair. Well, the whole Buchanan family together who could uh, ask for more. I do hope we're not too early. Well, it seems to be quite a trend this evening. I can only hope that it's because people can't wait for the party to begin. Well, that's uh, certainly true of us. Thank you, Dan. Well, I can't tell you how much it means to me to have you here, all of you. Well, we wouldn't dream of staying away, would we, Asa? Not even if we wanted to. Well, then I guess my party is going to be success, isn't it? Oh, here I am rattling on. Jackson, could you take the wraps, please? Yes, with pleasure, Mother. Well, the one problem, though, about coming early is that I'm afraid it's going to spoil my big surprise. Isn't that interesting? Tina loves surprises, too. Oh, I do. And the big surprise is that uh, the music tonight is going to be performed by Mr. Norman Cooper. Oh, really? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know who he is. Oh, I doubt if he ever played Malakay, I mean, he's, uh, he's a legend at the Waldorf Astorium. Yes, Clint and I have heard him play several times. Oh, I've had nothing but uh, happy associations with Mr. Cooper's music right up until tonight. Well, you know, I thought it would add just the right touch to the party, but I wanted to have him seated and playing when everybody arrived. It's... Oh, don't worry about it. I'm sure your party's going to be a smashing success. Thanks, Pam. Well, I'm so glad you came. I really am. Asa, I can understand why you like to have this lovely lady by your side. She really does a lot for what confidence. Oh, Elizabeth. Hey, right, speaking of confidence, why don't we all have a little champagne? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Here you go. Vicki, I hope you, uh, like this. It's a vintage that I heard you, uh, rave about. Shall we then? Oh, oh, no, shouldn't we toast something? Oh, Tina's right. Uh, to a night of wonderful surprises. I like that. To a night of wonderful surprises. Now, this is a surprise. What is this? Oh, you noticed. It's impossible not to notice. Yeah, well, Vicki, I had such respect for your taste and everything, the way you had the, the style and things, and, and I wanted to add my own style to, to the place. I hope you, I hope you like it. 
It'll take getting used to. Yes, you can say that again. Well, this is just an indication. Wait till you see the rest of the house. Well, then, I... honey, it's got to be mind-boggling. Oh, we'd love to see the rest of the house, wouldn't we, Asa? We would? Oh, well, I would love to give you the grand tour. Uh, Vicki, uh, Clint, would, would you like to join us? You lead on. We'll be right behind you, Tim. Okay, well, we'll go upstairs. I... Wait till you see what I am planning for the master bedroom. I'm going to base it on the Hall of Mirrors at Versailles. Well, what do you say now? You still have second thoughts about dropping our bombshell? The Hall of Mirrors I'm... at Versailles? I don't even have to see it. Just looking at the foyer, I can uh, guess what she's done to the library and every other room. Darling, this is so sad. She has tried so hard, and she so wants our approval. Yes, but she hasn't redecorated. She has vandalized. Well, I know that. It's horrible. The sooner Pete gets here, the sooner we can get on with this charade. Cassie, I told you how I stumbled onto this story. Now, I haven't kept anything from you. Now, can't you return the favor? What makes you think that I'm keeping something from you? <laughs> you want me to drop the story. But you haven't given me one convincing reason why. And that's all I ask, Cassie, just one good reason. I wish that I... I wish I could tell you something that would change your mind, but all I can tell you is the truth. The truth? Yes. And that's that David Rinaldi is dead. And there's no point in recalling all of his mistakes. I've gone through enough pain. And so have all the people who loved him. Haven't there been enough banner headlines? Hasn't there been enough pain already? You make a very strong case, Cassie. But I still have trouble believing you. I don't have any reason to lie to you. Well, neither do I. But you still don't trust me, do you? Now, I promised you, if the story comes out, I'll do everything in my power to make sure that no innocent people get hurt. You probably make promises all the time. I mean, it's just part of your job, right? Now, will you just wait a minute? If all I wanted to do was sell papers, I, I would have stopped the presses and I would have smacked that rumor on page one already. So why haven't you? Yeah, what kind of a heartless editor am I anyway? Oh. I should, uh... I should lose my job for this. Hello, Briggs? Abbott. Yeah, let's go with that alternate piece for the feature page today. Yeah, that's right. I'm pulling the Rinaldi story. A reason? Let's call it executive privilege. Thanks, Briggs. Richard, thank you. Um, I, I, I know you did the right thing. I know you did. Well, I really appreciate the show of affection, Cassie. But I want to warn you, I'm not, uh, I'm dropping the story, but uh, not my investigation. Now, I'm going to do everything that I can to get to the bottom of this rumor, with or without your help. Thank you. <laughs> and now for the biggest surprise of all the library. Vicky. Oh, this is something I didn't count on. Everybody decided to show up early. Yeah, early for them, late for us. The bomb is still ticking, Tracy. I know. Don't you think I know that? All oh, right, excuse me. I forgot you were the one that knows everything. Me, I'm just a dummy. The only thing I know is that when that bomb goes off, we are going with it, and it ain't gonna be to heaven. We're just gonna have to try to get out by force. Oh, right. Right through a library full of people. Uh-huh, sure. Well, you got your gun, don't you? Wait a minute, Tracy. Well, this is no time to argue. You either come up with a better idea, or we're shooting our way out of here. One life to live will continue in a moment. Asa, this must be that bride of yours I've heard so much about. And I've heard a great deal about you too, Mr. Abbott. Oh, it's Richard. And don't believe everything that Asa says about him. That is right, Pamela. He's even more pig-headed than I described. Asa, and I gotta tell. Have you tried those Swedish meatballs yet? No, nice. no, I'd love some. Lead the way. Thanks, good. Vicki, you haven't said a word about the library. Um, <clears throat> I'm... I'm... Speechless. Speechless. Well, I know it's a little different than what you're used to, but, you know... Oh, uh, 
Pam told me to just trust my own instincts, and and we're right, Pam. Well, I was. Yes, yeah, so that's to exactly see... what I did. Oh. And oh, did you see the bookshelves? I put in all these new volumes. Come on, I'll show you. Well. <clears throat> So it was just like that. He picked up the phone, he called the banner, and they, they dropped the story about David. I don't believe it, Cassie. <laughs> well, it's true. David and Jenny, their whereabouts are going to be a secret from now on. No, I didn't mean that. I mean, I tried to knock some sense in that knuckle-headed Abbott's head, but I should have known it would take a young and beautiful lady to bring him around. <laughs> My goodness, I don't think I've ever seen so many bestsellers all in one place. You know, I got every book on the banners list. Isn't that great? But of course I had to box up some of those musty old books that were there before. Oh yes, the first editions. But I didn't go with the rug. Besides, I like to keep on top of what's new and exciting. Well, you could certainly call this room new and exciting is also a word to describe it. Uh, I can think of a few others too, yeah. You're not just saying that, are you? You mean you really like it? Well, I... Well, it would mean the world to me if you, if you did. It would. Vicar isn't just a house. It's a legend. And you're the one who made it that way. And I just want to continue that legend. In the same way that I want to continue our friendship. What a no. sweet thing for you to say. Thank you. Miss Delilah Buchanan, Mr. and Mrs. Arthur J. Wickersham. Oh, the Wickershams. Oh, my God, what am I going to say? What can I say? What do you say? Well, Wickersham. How about hello? Well, no, I don't know. I just... I, I mean... I don't know. Well, I don't need a formal introduction. Anyone as beautiful as you must be Delilah Buchanan. Oh, well, thank you. And anyone with a line like that must be Richard Abbott. I've heard, I've heard so, so much, much about, about you. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, who cares about the Wickershams? <laughs> Richard Abbott. Delilah, don't you look lovely tonight? Oh, well, thank you, Tina. I see you met our guest of honor. Yes. Well, and you Talking. must be the Wickershams. <laughs> Actually, we were on our way to the opera, but... Um... Yes, but Delilah said this party would be much more fun. Oh, isn't she sweet? <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time we went on one of Delilah's escapades, we lived to regret it. Yes. <laughs> Somebody played piano music all night long. I mean, can you believe it? Uh, Jackson? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jackson, could you please uh, take Delilah and her uh, guests here on a tour of the house? The long tour? Yes, madam, of course. If you'd be so kind as to come with me, uh, maybe I should give Jackson uh, a hand. No, no, no. No, Richard. You're the guest of honor. Your place is right here by me. Darling, you heard her, didn't you? I was merely trying to be polite. She took it as a major compliment. More than that, she took it as a peace offering. Sweetheart, your concern for Tina is very touching. But when was she ever concerned about you? Look at her. I mean, she's like a little girl lost in some... Good news! Habit backed off. You've got to him. Not me. Cassie. Don't tell me you two were in on this, too. Mesa told us about your little dispute. I'm just very happy you've straightened it out. Yeah, well, don't think for one minute I did it as a favor to Asa. Now, I'm not going to stop this investigation until I get to the bottom of it. Larry, you look just as dashing as ever, and maybe you look lovely. Thank you, Tina. Nice to see you. Oh, excuse me. There's Clinton and Vicky. Excuse, excuse us, Tina. Us. <laughs> Captain! Look at all this stuff I found in the kitchen here. Look at this. Uh, uh, cookies, uh, soda. Looks like they were here, all right. And they only left not too long ago. Captain, take a look at this. What is this? Some kind of list or something? What's it say, Captain? Vicky, Clint, Mimi, Cassie, Delilah. Was there any more names? Yeah. Yours and mine. Hmm. Whacked out criminal. This is obviously some kind of mutual hit list. Can you imagine if they got the chance to get all the names in that list in one room? Yeah. And I've seen this big party at Lantern. They're the one she's throwing for Richard Abbott. Nice. We gotta get to her. Yeah. Let's just hope we're not too late. But Tracy and Stick are still in town. Oh, well, Ray, this is your... He sent the police over to the back street to see if they were hiding over there. That's all I need to hear tonight. Excuse me, madam. 
Captain Ed Hall wishes to speak to you. Ed, what's he want to talk to me? Uh, excuse me, a moment. Uh, hello, Ed. Uh, could you call back later, like uh, tomorrow? Tina, please, now don't ask me to explain. Just clear your house out as soon as you can. What, clear the house? Is this a joke or something? Now, Tina, listen, I know you're having a party, but in the interest of safety, I'm asking you to cancel the party and send all your guests home. Don't tell me there have been complaints from the neighbors on the noise. Now, Ed, there aren't any neighbors here, so there's nobody to complain. I am trying to tell you there could be some kind of an attack on landfare, and your guests could be in danger unless you do exactly as I say. Danger? What are you talking... <laughs> Oh, I get it. Ed Hall, you should be ashamed of yourself. Tina, please! No, I mean, they call you a super cop. You'd compromise yourself in five seconds just to keep Asa Buchanan happy. Tina, believe me, this is very serious. And so is my party. And I am not going to let you or Asa Buchanan spoil it for me. What did she say? we got to get to land fair and fast. Come on. Okay, now all you have to do is fire a few shots in the air. I know what to do. When they start to scatter, you just make tracks for that door. Okay, and what if someone gets brave? Yeah, they're gonna die anyway, right? Better them than us. Yeah, it's a crime, that's what it is. Jimmy, my boy, you did a beautiful job in that secret room. Nerva Tina to make you want to undo it all now. <laughs> I won't do it. A man can still take pride in his work. I got half a mind to take my tools and walk out here and let Miss Tina Lord do her own dirty work. Excuse me, everybody, can I please have your attention? Well, he is here at last, the man we've all been waiting for, direct from the Waldorf Astoria in New York. Mr. Norman Kubin. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I say what a pleasure it is to be here on this very special occasion. I hope you enjoy the music. Did he say music? Brace yourself, darling. It's piano tunes. Mr. Kubin, my husband and I are such fans of yours. Vicky and Clint Buchanan. Oh, you remember. How can I forget? I played your favorite tune at the Waldorf. It was uh, your anniversary, wasn't it? What a it? memory you have. That's extraordinary. Oh, Mr. Gilbert, I, I don't know if you remember Delilah. me. Delilah, but... how can oh, I forget? The night in Paris, I played Cole Porter. You danced on a table. Oh, yeah. You did. Oh, I did. I, I thought you might have forgotten that. Shame oh, on you, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, excuse me. Norman, uh, whenever you're ready. Uh, Mr. Buchanan, there's a call for you, sir. Uh, Mr. O'Neill. Paul Pete. Yes, sir. Uh, you may take it on the study if you wish, sir. He must have been delayed. Uh, I'll be right back. I know we're here tonight to celebrate the return of someone near and dear, Mr. Richard Abbott. And, uh, and I'd like to begin by playing a song that reminds me that when you love someone, they never really go away. The name of the song is I'll Be Seeing You. Couldn't be better, do you hear that? They're even playing the right music for the occasion. Hey, I don't give a damn about the music. We have got to move now. You have no soul, you know that? Yeah, well, if we're standing here when that bomb goes off, you are not gonna have a soul and you are not gonna have a head. Now, come on, snap out of it and move. Open that door. All right, all right, I'll open it. But on the other hand, the pay is good, and what the hell, it's only a job. Okay, Tina. Hope you're happy now. Well, go on, pull the switch. Pull the switch. I'm pulling it. It's not working. What do you mean it doesn't work? It has to work. Look, something's wrong. Hey, don't tell me that. Not when there is a bomb ticking 10 feet away. Don't dare tell me that. Okay, now just relax. I've got to, I've got to tighten up some of the wires over here or something, okay? Hey, 
Hey, what happened to the music we were listening to from the monitor? I don't give a damn about the music. Open the door. The guy's still playing on the piano. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It means, it means that the TV monitors must have been shut off. Fine, right, great. Terrific. Now, open the door. But you do not understand. You do not understand, okay? Uh, this means that the, the power for this whole room here must have been shut off somehow. Oh, they can't do that. Yes, they can. All I have to do is switch... Master fuse box. Do not give me a lecture on electricity. Oh, Just get me out of here. Look at this door is run electrically, okay? If there is no juice, there is no door. Okay, 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 okay. Let's just not panic here, okay? okay, okay. Because if there is no juice, then that means that the bomb can't work, right? <laughs> right? The bomb was wired to a battery stick. You didn't have to say that. You really didn't have to say that. Oh, God, get me out of here! Help me! Help me get me out of here! Just this thing is soundproof. It's not going to do any good, okay? There's only one thing that we can do. Wait, that's the wrong way! Okay. I've got to get to the bomb, okay? I've got to defuse it before it's too late. Oh, yeah. Now I'm the one who's sorry we came. I cannot believe that Tina would pick this oh, song. Even Tina's not that cruel. This is just some damn coincidence. music critics weren't going to be here tonight. <laughs> you play so beautifully. Unfortunately, that particular song brings back very painful memories for many of us here I'm sorry, I didn't know. No, of course, and you could have absolutely no way of knowing, but if you wouldn't mind, would you play something else? I'd be more than happy to. Thank you, and again, I'm sorry. something, anything. Look, you can stop breathing down my neck. I am nervous enough as it is. All right, don't be nervous, baby, because I'm nervous enough for both of us. You just get it to stop. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to. I've got to override the safeguard. What yeah. safeguard? Just pull the plug. Yeah, yeah, would you stop it? If you touch the wrong thing, it is going to set it off. Okay, I'll just let you handle it now, Okay, right? okay, thanks a heap. I hope I can. Oh, oh, you can, Tracy. Come on, you're a genius. You built it, didn't you? Yeah, and I also built it to be tamper-proof, so if anybody touches it the wrong way, it is going to blow. What? If that's true, then okay. how are you going to do it? Just got to retrace my steps. Oh, hopefully, what did I do? What did I do? I oh, come on, Tracy. You can do it. Come on, baby. You got to do it. I am not ready to die. Shut up! Okay. I'd say my prayers, but I just can't remember them right now, you know. Please, Tracy. Please, come on. just wonderful. You know, everyone has seen this um, interesting house except for you. Uh, may I show you on a guided tour? Delilah, I'd be delighted. Oh, great. Let's go. Uh, excuse me, everybody. Uh, please may I have your attention again. Before we go any further with this wonderful party, I think it's time for me to present uh, our Tina, guest. Tina, uh, excuse me. Excuse me, Richard. Um, before you uh, go any further with this, I think Ricky has something she'd like to talk to you about, don't you? Yes, I'd like to have a word with you, please, Tina, in private. Are you sure? Mm, I think it's better. If that's what you want. 
Miss Emily, tell me what's going on. Uh, will you just go along with Vicky, Tina? I'll be happy to introduce the guest of honor. Vicky, what's going on here? I was just about to... Well, I thought it best that I tell you this privately, Tina. Pete O'Neill has taken legal action today, and you'll re receive official notice of it tomorrow. Notice of what? All the Lord assets have been frozen. What? You can't do that. It's already been done, Tina. I think it only fair that while we are in dispute for the house and the money, neither you nor I should be able to get at the funds. Fair? You had the nerve to talk to me about fair? I can't believe you would do this, Vicky. I'm not going to let you. In fact, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that this whole thing blows up right in your face. Watch Action News at 5 p.m. What are you thinking about? Never mind. I can guess. I can see it in your eyes. You're performing your new composition in your head. This is getting scary. You even know what I'm thinking before I do. I am no longer a nurse. I am a scientist who has dedicated my life to the study of David Renault. Well, I'm going to play the entire composition for you tomorrow, and then your role will change to that of audience, critic, and music historian. After which, I suggest we take a break and uh, plan ourselves a little skiing trip. Oh, let's do that. Let's find some little village in the Alps where nobody speaks English. It's just you and me. In other words, you're not bored with me yet? Not yet. Would you like another brandy before we head for home? Mm hmm And on the way home, let's stop by a newsstand and see if we can get a copy of The Intruder. of some kind. Lisa, Lisa, are you all right? Oh, I'm trapped. Vicky? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in one piece, I think. Cassie, are you all right? <laughs> yes. <coughs> I'm okay, but my ankle is killing right, me. Take I can it easy. Let's go. Hey, please help me. Go ahead. Oh, okay. She wants it. Be right there. Help. Let's get this thing off. Well, what's going on here? I mean, are we at war or something? Oh. Cassie, is it broken? No, I just, I don't know what happened to it, but it hurts a lot. Look, it came from the secret room here. There's, there's a big hole here. Well, Tina, get a fire extinguisher. Well, I don't know where one is. It's in the kitchen, Tina, for heaven's sakes, if there's still a kitchen left. Is everybody all right? <coughs> we'll take a look at the bomb, Ed. In the secret room. Secret. Yeah. We heard the explosion in the car. We sent for the fire department. All right, come on, Ray. This way. <coughs> Hi there, Lisa. Oh, Paul, hi. What are you doing hanging around here? Oh, I hang around here all the time now. I'm your waitress. You're kidding. What happened to the back street? Your guess is good as mine. Which place is on the market now? First fool who comes along thinks he can make some money there. It's his. Changes are hard, I know, but it's going to be nice to see you around. Thanks. Josh is coming. How about a couple of cappuccinos? All right, you got it. Great. Hey, Clover. You know Lisa hey. Barron? Oh, yeah. We, we go way back at least a couple of weeks, right? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Lisa? Oh, I'm hanging in there. I'm glad you came by. I was, uh, was going to call you. That's Avi. Yeah, I'm at a dead end trying to figure out who planted those pills in his jacket. You know, I went to Dad. And he swore up and down that he had absolutely nothing to do with it. He was even a little insulted that I had asked him. Well, it's still the most logical choice, but hey, I mean, there's no way to prove it. You know? So there's nothing you can do for Bobby, 
Well, not unless some information comes out of nowhere. No, I'm afraid not. It doesn't make sense because there's nothing that he can do when he's on the run. Oh, but no. More and more, Chip, I just get the feeling I'm never gonna see him again. Hey, 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 now, listen to me. Don't think that, all right? Don't even begin to think that because Bobby Blue loves you. Right, and you know, Blue, he's gonna come back, huh? Say, what are you doing on my date, Chip? Making a pass or making a cry? Making a pass. Hi, Josh. Just talking about one of your favorite subjects, Mr. Bobby Blue. What now? Well, you must know, we, uh, Chip and I thought, well, we suspected that Dad had something to do with Bobby's setup, you know, but we can't find any substantial evidence. You know, he might be lying about the whole thing to you and Stella. What do you mean, Stella? She didn't call you up? <laughs> well, we're hardly the best of friends right now. What does she have to do with this? Hey, are we gonna spend the rest of the night talking about Bobby, or are you gonna do your DJ number, Chip? Josh, please, tell me. Uh, this is my DJ number. <laughs> Look, it's just that I asked her what she thought of our theory about your dad. Because all the pills came from Baron Pharmaceuticals. And because, well, she's, she used to be Bobby's friend, you know? She was in the gang for a while. Well, yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, well, anyway, she said absolutely not. Bobby would never deal. And she also got pretty insistent that your dad would never plant the, the pills on blue, so... Yeah, but how could she know? She, she doesn't know my dad at all. You sure about that? I'm positive I never introduced any of the kids from the gang to my parents. Okay, people trust meet, me. People meet in restaurants and discos, Lisa. Come on, let's no. not blow this out of proportion. Yeah, Lisa, I don't know what to say. I mean, she went right to him after I told her about this, and she, she told him all about it. Yeah, but how could she do that to a man that she doesn't even know? Say something like that. It makes no sense. Lisa, I'm just telling you what she told me. Huh? Maybe Stella's just lying about the whole thing. How about that? Listen, come on, don't blow it up out of proportion. Let's uh, relax. Lisa? Lisa? You know, there's something about this that just doesn't add up, and I'm gonna find out what it is. <laughs> Take it easy, I thought you could walk very far. Easy. Uh, where's yeah. the pain, Asa? My ribs right here. You think yeah. I could have broken? I don't know, it's possible. We'll take you to the hospital for x-rays. Anytime, excuse me, I wanna check on Cassie's there. Richard, Richard, you have come here. Oh, I'm, I'm all right. Tina, were you storing something down there, or what? No, of course not. The only thing I can think of is that, that I had the electrician come and maybe he messed things up. He was supposed to sever the wires so that nobody could ever go down there anymore. Okay, it's moving very slowly. Oh, all, right. Oh. all right. I don't think it's broken, but we'll take you to the hospital for x-rays. Come on, let me help you. Come on. Hey, any injuries? Uh, just a couple, but not, uh, nobody's serious. A uh, rescue truck is right behind us. The medics will take care of them. Where's the fire? I'll show you. Uh, Tina, huh, honey? Damn fine party. <laughs> it's not my fault. I mean, I'm more upset than anybody. Look what this did. It ruined my whole decorating job here. Yeah, you know, maybe there's one good thing came out of this explosion. I still can't figure out why Ed and Rave had their guns drawn. It's got to mean they don't think it was an accident. Oh. But I don't have any enemies. I mean, except for Steve Domino, but, but he's in jail and... All right, okay, I have a few enemies, all right, but nobody that would do anything like that on the... Vicky, oh, you really hated that secret room. Now, Tina, and just stop right there before everyone in this room jumps on you. I'm gonna go call the hospital. No, no, room. sit don't down. I have to go. I'm not dying. I just wish I could get up and throttle that dim with Tina. What do you think? Uh, I'm just thinking that I hope this is Victor's last legacy. Our father would not do something like that, Clint. I have everybody's attention, please. Oh, what, what, did, what did you find? It appears to have been a, a time bomb made out of plastic explosives. Tracy <laughs> James and Thomas Stickley obviously set the thing. They couldn't get out of there before it blew. Them. Wait a minute, Tina, you, you hid those two down there? Of course not. Well, how did they know there was a room, huh? I don't know, maybe Nicole Smith told Stick about it when they were playing kidnap. Tina, can everybody just shut up? i let Rafe continue. Yeah. Rafe, you must have thought that they were down there. Yo, Captain Hall and I found evidence at the Backstreet Bar. They've been hiding out there. We also found a list. All the people that Stick and Tracy wanted to get even with, Ed realized they'd all be here tonight. So he called Tina here to get everybody out, and she refused. Oh, no. I thought it was just a joke. I thought he was in with Asa. They were just trying to ruin my party. I, I don't know, funny. Good thing Victor Lord made that room as a bomb shelter. You'd all be dead by now, as it is, only... Sickly and Tracy James bought it. Is there enough left of them to make a positive? Yeah, there's plenty of them. They were on a staircase. Eh? 
But he got caught there while the bomb went off. Something obviously went wrong, because Tracy was an expert in, in electronics. Well, we'll never know now. Either they cut their escape too close, or the bomb went off before it was meant to. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh. No, I'm the reason they died. Oh, God, I mean, there's no way you could know no. that. There's... No, I had the electrician come to sever the wires. They couldn't get out of there, Pam. I'm the reason they're responsible for their deaths. You know, who the hell cares about them? You couldn't listen to Ed, oh no. We all could have been killed. Look, I was just trying to have a party for Richard, that's all. Tina, come on, I was the one that asked you to bring the electrician over here. Oh yeah, now I have two deaths on my head. Hey, Tina, I wouldn't cry for Tracy. Cry for her victims. Thank heavens you're here. My husband's been hurt. He's Listen, been I'm a doctor. I want this man taken to the hospital on a chest x-rays. There's also a young lady in the other room with the ankle problem. Look, I'll go get her. I'll uh, take her to the ambulance. I don't need a hospital. Shh. You are going. And is the fire contained downstairs? Yes, it is, Vicky. Well, then we're all safe. There's no danger of the rest of the house going Well, up, it right? would be best if you all cleared out. I mean, just in case. I'm not going anywhere. No, I don't think I'm going to leave either. Let's go, Mr. Buchanan. Uh, I'm gonna need one of you guys to stay, check the bodies out in the basement there. You can sign the forms later, huh? I'll stay. Good, thank you. Tina, I, uh, you I'm gonna go to the hospital with this. Look, I'm so sorry about, about everything. You're sorrier than I am. Okay, thank you. I'll be Ed, Ed, you can't make me leave my home. Well, uh, apparently I... I couldn't do that, but it would be logical. But you don't listen to very much logic, do you? Why didn't you tell me they might do this? Tina, I did try to tell you, but as usual, you wouldn't listen. Captain Hall! All right. I gotta get some more. The end of the secret room, honey. Hopefully the end of a, an awful era. Many little bombs have gone off in our lives because of that room and everything that happened down there. I just pray that the bad memories will be gone with the room now. Sweetie, are you all right? I don't know what I am, Ma'am. You want to leave? No. I don't leave until I see Tracy's body. Make sure she never bothers anyone again. Are you sure that you want to pick up a copy of The Intruder? I promise, Brad, you know that. That was our deal. All right. What if you get a message that all sorts of horrible things are happening? You're going to want to rush home and help out. No, I won't, David, because I know I can't. Then why dredge up the past? Because I'm wondering about our friends, how they're doing, if everything is okay. And don't tell me that you don't. You never mention Cassie, and I know that you miss her so much. All right, I miss her a lot, and I think about her a lot, and I hope that she is as happy in her love with Rob as we are, that her mother isn't driving her nuts. I hope that, that Herb is continuing to be the father that I can no longer be. Okay, so you understand. Oh, I understand. But I don't want to pick up a copy of The Intruder because I don't want to find out that my hopes are untrue. I don't want to find out who's dead, who's ill, because I can't do a thing about it. We're better off not knowing. I wonder if Vicky's okay. I know that Vicky was your main worry in land. You, the last we heard, she's doing fine. She's not fine. She wasn't fine. She wasn't quite herself. You know that. I keep thinking that maybe she reverted back to Nikki. And what if she has? Don't you see? That's the point. What if she has? What are you going to do about it? Fine. I understand what you're saying, and you, you probably, you're probably right, and you've got a point. But I want a copy of The Intruder. And I am going to get one, one way or another. So in other words, I better just get out of your way, because once I see that you are this determined, I know sure as hell nothing is going to stop you. Maestro, you're very understanding. Here we go. Hi there, Josh. Clover, what? Hey, didn't you know I was working here now? You know why? Because we got the best cappuccino machine in town here, not at the back street. Lisa, honey, you okay? She's fine. I think. Chip, uh, could you tell me what Stella said about my father? Exactly what she said. 
Lisa, looking. leave it alone. Come on. Let's Josh, relax. look, if you don't like the conversation, go and find one somewhere else, okay? Chill, chill. Oh, keep talking. Just Lisa, tell me. listen, all, all that it was was that I came right out and asked her if she knew him, okay? And she, she seemed, I think she slipped when she started answering. I, I don't know. But all I know is that she did take the time out to call me back and tell me that she was convinced that Bart did not set up Blue. Wait, wait, she called him Bart? I don't know, Lisa. I, I mean, I... Maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm not... I'm not sure. Well, never mind. I'll just, uh, I'll just ask her myself. Lisa, can I talk you out of making a big scene, please? No. Not now you can't. Oh, thanks a lot, Chip. You really ruined my evening. Oh, ruined your evening. How about Bobby Blue's life? Uh, that's what's ruined. Don't talk to me about Bobby Blue's no-count life. And where do you come off getting Lisa suspicious of her father, huh? Now she's over there arguing with Stella. Listen, man, I'm just, I'm just trying to get at the truth, man. Something you might try for a change. There's certain truths that certain people shouldn't know. What good does it do? Wow. Lisa. Hi there. Hi. I couldn't help admiring your diamond earrings. Mm. Something, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little pricey, though, aren't they? Uh, what'd you do? Get the lottery or something? I'm just a poor working girl, but uh, mm -hmm. I've got myself a new boyfriend. Oh. Young, handsome, and generous with the buck. Yeah, well, uh, where is he? Who is he? Was he a secret or something? Hmm? I don't want to take the chance of anyone, uh, Stealing him from me. Who are you with? Josh, Chip, or both? Look, Stella, just cut the whole thing, okay? Hmm. How do you know my father? I know. I mean, I'd see him around. I knew him enough to say hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You knew him enough to ask about a uh, this setup, too, huh? Pretty nervy of me, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, I asked him, and he got uh, real angry too. I don't think he'll be too friendly if we run into each other. Hmm. You're lying to me, Stella. Girl, I got nothing to lie about, okay? And now I think that I'll go and see my guy. Excuse me. Josh, Josh, give me your car keys, please. Hmm? Give well, me I mean, the keys! Hey, uh, Lisa, what, what's going on here? I mean, where are you? You're off driving. That little fox is going somewhere, and I'm going to trail it because I know it's something I don't want to see. Thanks a lot, Chip. Cassie and Asa are off to the hospital. Well, I keep thanking Victor Lord for making that room a bomb shelter. Do you know he always talked about making one? That was in the 50s when everyone was afraid of a Soviet attack. I had no idea he'd ever done it. Where's Tina? I don't know, Terrace. Would you like to take a uh, look around and see what damage has been done to the rest of the house? I suppose we had better. Tina, come on in. It's cold out there. All right, everybody, we're going to start bringing up the bodies now. Uh, Larry, you can identify Tracy. Uh, Clint, I guess you knew Stick, huh? Yeah. Okay. Clint? Right here, please. Yeah, that's him. Okay, thank you. Larry? Ed, listen, I knew her pretty well. I'll Sorry, let me... baby. I want to do this. Yeah, that's her. That's her, all right. Thank God I don't have to see that face anymore. All right, then. I still think all of you should clear out of here. Well, I'd quite like to check our home first. I'm not going anywhere because this is my home. Oh, come on, honey. You don't have to listen to that dimwit. Come on, sweetie. Let's leave. Come on. Yeah, Ed, we'll see you later. Guess you can sleep a lot easier now, huh, Larry? Yeah. Tina. I still think you ought to stay over at the Vernon Inn tonight. 
He's got a point. No. No. Richard, would you see if you can talk some sense into her, please? Tina, what's the story? Richard, I just have this horrible feeling that if I ever leave here, I may never get back in again. Now, that doesn't make any sense. So who says it has to? I... I'm sorry, Richard. You know, it's not every day a guy gets a welcome home party as unique as this. Yeah. You're very nice. Boy, it was awful. Look, at least Tracy and Stick got killed instead of all of us. And you weren't responsible for their deaths. Now, you can't do that to yourself. Tina? Richard, I'm not going anywhere. It has taken me too many years to get into this house, the house where I should have grown up. And Vicky and Clint, they may do everything they can to try to throw me out of here. And who knows, maybe they're even going to win eventually. But right now, the unfair is mine. And if this place blows up, well, then I'm just going to go with it. Okay. Now, I understand. Now, you're like a kid who's got a new doll and wants to take it everywhere she goes. Now, I didn't mean that as a crack. I really do understand. And don't worry. I'll stay with you. You're new to this life, Jenny. Always looking over your shoulder, wondering if a waiter or the salesperson in a shop or a news vendor is the one that's been assigned to track you down. I've been through it before. So that makes it easier for you? No, no, not easier, but maybe a little more familiar. I've learned to live with it. And I think I've learned to live with it. Hmm. And no matter what you read about Landview in the papers, you're not going to want to say, oh, the hell with all this, it's just too hard, and rush home. No matter what, no matter how many difficulties we have, no matter what happens, we are always going to be together. Always. I don't know what I did in a past life to deserve you in this one, but I am eternally grateful. What do you say we go home in this sudden burning desire to show you just how grateful I am. Do you mind if I reciprocate? I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh. Bye, Struggle Lisa, what do you think you're going to find when Stella stops? I really don't want to talk about it, Josh. <laughs> you must think you're in a movie, a car chase. Look, if I'm right, it's a nightmare, not a movie. Slow down, you're going to kill us. I can't help it if she's going fast. She does everything fast. Lies fast, too. But she didn't get to me this time. Mm -mm. Pull over at that phone booth. I want to call in at the hospital. Josh, you're not on call tonight, OK? I want to check in with emergency and see what's going on. Do you know what the more than you're saying, huh? I only know that we are chasing Stella through the streets. Yeah, we're chasing Stella because she went to my dad talking about Bobby being set up. That means she knows dad very well. That is ridiculous logic. It's not. You know my dad. Nobody just goes up to him and says, Hey, buddy, done anything illegal lately? Mm -mm. Stella. Stella's always been intimidated by authority. You're always after the big shots. I know her, Josh. I Lisa, this is my car. Turn it around wait, now, wait, wait, damn wait, wait. it. She's taking to Left Fork. She's going to the Waterside Inn. I don't want to go to the Waterside Inn. I want to go back to Elmo's. I want to have a good time. Yeah, and keep me from the truth. Is that it? Good evening. Good evening, sir. Can I get you something? Yeah. Uh, scotch on the rocks and a brandy for the lady I'm expecting. One life to live will continue in a moment. Pardon? But Maestro Rinaldi. You are talking to me? I am Franz Hoffman. Don't you remember me? Apparently not. Oh. Uh, but you are David Rinaldi, aren't you? No, I am not. I'm very sorry. 
sir. I took a master class conducted by the maestro uh, several years back. You look so much like him. Ça devient un peu dérangé. <laughs> well, I have heard that before. Uh, he is a, a genius. You should take it as a compliment. And it might be very interesting if you came face to face with the maestro. I'm sure, but highly unlikely. You see, Monsieur Renaldi died some months ago. Apparently, you, you have not heard. Au revoir. So then you heard about it? It was incredible, Brad. Yeah, we're very lucky. Tracy James finally made a big mistake. Someday I'll tell you about the time she tried to kill me. Listen, the reason I'm calling is because I talked to Richard. I talked him out of, of doing that story on David. Yeah. Well, listen, he still wants to check it out, but he promised he wouldn't publish any rumors about David. I think that, you know, Issa and I should stay on top of him a little bit more. Oh, you can go back to Baltimore. You don't have to worry. No, I don't think he's lying, but if you want to stick around, I, I don't think it would hurt. Yeah, my ankle's fine. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'll be in touch. Bye, Brad. Well, there seems to be something broken in every room, but nothing major. No, the explosion sent vases and pictures flying everywhere, and the kitchen looks as if the staff had a pot and pan fight in it. So most of my things are okay, then? I don't know about your things, Tina. But everything in this house basically seems to be all right. Darling, I think it's time we leave. Uh, I'm going to stick around. If the police discover anything pertinent, I'll let you know. Thank you, Richard. Richard, you don't have to give an accounting to Vicky and Clint. Tina, have you ever heard the expression, a broken record? It means something that repeats and repeats and repeats. And that's what you sound like. Because the only person that you are convincing that this property belongs to you is you. Clint, uh, Richard, could you give us a hand down here, please? I'll be right there, Ed. Thank you. Sweetheart, why don't you uh, wait in the car? I'll be back up as soon as possible. No, I'll be just fine, right here in my own library. Aren't you going to start yelling? It's not true! No, Vicky, I don't want to fight with you. I am much too upset. As well you should be, Tina. You know, I have done a very good job of being polite to you all evening, but it is starting to sink in that this house could have been blown to smithereens and all of us in it because of you. Look, you are such a little narcissist, Tina. You could not see past your own ego when Ed called, could you? You couldn't listen to Ed's warning because you were so busy listening to yourself. It was a mistake. I'm sorry, all right? One of many you have made. to you, didn't it? Because my mother was seduced by that dirty old man that both of us happened to call father. But then you, you got everything and I got absolutely nothing. So you go on, you, you yell at me, you freeze my assets, you go right ahead and throw me out of this house, huh? I don't care. Because our father said that I was supposed to take over the Lord Estate if you should ever become ill. What have you done with the Lord Estate, Tina? Hmm? You let a phony lawyer con you. You put the house and all its guests into mortal danger. Good God, Tina. Nicole Smith could have managed this estate with more wisdom than you have. I think you ought to take Clint's advice and go wait in the car because you are no longer welcome in my home. What is left of your home? Ha! I just hope you didn't let the insurance lapse on landfill. The insurance. Oh, Tina, you didn't. Wow. I just took off a, a million dollar insurance policy on Landfair. Boy, I can collect on that now. Boy, you're here. You thought you'd be late. <laughs> As it turned out, I got out early. Mm. How are you, beautiful? Good. Got our drinks. Shall we drink down by the fire? Sure. Before we go upstairs? Mm hmm. Earrings look stunning on you. Thank you. What'd you tell Stephanie about tonight? Well, does it matter? She never questions my excuses. 
But if Lisa starts asking questions, you know? Lisa? Bart. Hmm? I think that uh, she might be suspicious. Of you and me? What the hell brought that on? Well, it was a dumb move on my part. It's a connection between Chip trying to help Lisa figure out who set Bobby up. Bobby is not supposed to be a part of any of our lives now. Well, I guess Chip told Lisa I talked to you. And now Lisa wonders how I even know you, let alone could ask you questions. Damn! Stella, I could strangle you! Well, I covered as best as I could. I mean, of course, she knows that I can't afford these earrings. Where did you see her? I stopped by Elmo's. Well, because you said, you know, you might be late. What are you doing, flaunting your goodies all over town? Well, what good is having ice in your ears if you can't show them off? Heaven knows I can't show you off, so... I can't believe it. If Lisa knows about us... Lisa is not some little girl, Bart. She and Bobby were lovers. She knows about this kind of... I don't want to hear it! Okay, okay, you're hurting me. Go home, Stella. I can't take a chance of seeing you, not for some time. Oh, this is super. You're throwing me over because your daughter may not approve. Now, she might go to Stephanie, and if she does, I've had it. I'm sorry, baby, this is where I get off. Why, you... And don't make a scene. So it was all full. You don't care about me. And God knows you don't love me. All this talk about how you eventually will ask Stephanie for a divorce and that I would be Mrs. Bart Barron. Have I fallen for the oldest trick in the world, Bart, or what? It's your fault, it's over. My fault? You're not mature enough to handle a, an affair, Stella. Now just walk out of here like a lady. You know, all these months, I felt like a lady with you. But all of a sudden, I feel real dirty. I feel like what I am, a mistress. A rich man's little tramp. Josh Hall, I'm going to break your arm if you don't let go of mine. I'm just trying to keep you from making a fool of yourself. Yeah, please. sure. No, you're just stopping me from going to see Dad. No way. You probably were helping him and have been hurting Bobby. I know. I didn't do a damn thing to Bobby, Lisa. You did. What did Daddy do? Pay you? Because huh? I know the only thing you value is money. I also happen to value you, Lisa. Please don't go in there. I'm sorry, Josh. I can't be talked out of it because right over there is sitting my father's sports scarf. Lisa! Oh, I'm sure relieved, aren't you? I don't know. I guess if I, uh, if I could undo some of the things that Tracy did, killing Dr. Polk, Laurel, her old aunt, oh, hell, going all the way back to Tracy's birth, Sweetheart, you've got to wipe that out of your I mind. I know, I know. No, I know it's not going to happen right away. I don't know. It's just that every time I think of Laurel, I suddenly see Tracy. I think of all the senseless, needless deaths. Well, I wish I had a pill that would make you forget all that. Oh, man, you have been so good through this. You've, re you've been a terrific friend. And I thank you, and I... I think you ought to stay as far away from me as you can. Oh, At least until I get over some of these lousy feelings. I'm dragging you down, No, you're not. Yeah, so I just yeah. want to help pick you up. I don't know. Maybe someday. Come on. I'll drive you home. Um, thank you, but I prefer to stay here. You're the one who's making this a permanent split. I said I was getting off for now. You're maybe a frightened for... man, Bart. You're frightened of your daughter. You're frightened of your wife. Unfortunately, you don't give a damn about me. Stella, you're just too young to understand. If you were married for as long as I've, if you had a daughter to worry about, if you worked as hard as I have for as long as I have, you wouldn't be so willing to throw it away for a love affair. The affair part I did. But where's the love part? Dangling from my ears? Or are these for services rendered? Stella, you're not listening to anything I'm saying. I'll call you in a few weeks when you've calmed down. You set up Bobby Blue, didn't you? Well, let me tell you one thing before I walk out that door. Mr. Blue has got more class than you ever will.
You are going to collect one million dollars because of an explosion that occurred in a room that is not even supposed to be a part of this house? Good luck, my dear. You better wish me luck, that is, if you want land fair restored. Some of what's been destroyed cannot be replaced, Tina. Money cannot buy everything. Thank heavens, darling. Please, let's go. Uh, you may not want to take off so fast, Vicky. Why? What now? We found a closet that had been bricked in. The explosion tore a hole in the place. Uh, what? You found a closet with things in it? Uh, just one. I don't even want to know what is in there, all right? Well, I do, because whatever it is, it's mine. Just hold on. Ed's bringing it up right now. Well, what is it, Richard? Please tell me. Lisa. What a pleasant surprise. I, uh, I was just talking to your friend, Stella. She said that she uh, just met you at Elmo's. You were right about the handsome and rich part, Stella. Get out. Something wrong, Lisa? I don't even know what to say to you. About what? Oh, Dad, quit the games with me already, okay? You've been cavorting around with Stella in front of everybody. Honey, that is crazy. I would never do anything well, like that. I never that. thought you would have been able to, but I know now. I've seen enough and heard enough. And if you continue to lie to me, I'm going to leave your life, and you're never going to talk to me again. Lisa, Lisa, sit down. Lisa, sit, sit down. Sit down. All right. I'll be honest. It's true. But I was just letting her down tonight before you came in. Look, she only told you all this because she knew that I was on to you. I followed her here knowing that it was you. That you were the little sugar daddy who paid for the diamond earrings. It happens, Lisa. Your mother and I have been married for 25 years. Boredom sets in. Lots of men my age start... I don't young... want to hear about other men. You're my father and you betrayed my mother. My, never in a I don't years want to discuss about... what's between your mother and me. At this time, there's a lot you don't understand, Lisa. But you just can't judge me and condemn me. It's not fair. <laughs> okay. We won't talk about Mom now, okay? We'll talk about fairness, Dad. We'll talk about how fair you were to me and Bobby, okay? Bobby has nothing to Bobby do with this. Bobby has everything to do with this. Because you gave me all these lectures about how he was a lowlife, how he wasn't good to sit at the same table with me, much less hold my hand. But now you're going out with some floozy from his gang, right? Look, if Bobby's a lowlife, what the hell does that make Stella? Lisa. <laughs> I won't take this from you. Well, you're gonna have to. Because now I know that you put the drugs on Bobby. That is nonsense. Oh, yeah. It might have been any other night, but I know now. I know that you're capable of shaming my mother going out with somebody else. <laughs> Imagine you telling me how to run my life. <laughs> Lisa, don't turn your back on me because of Stella. Stella doesn't mean anything to me. Doesn't mean anything to you. You gave her diamond earrings. They would have paid for a year of college for Bobby. And you gave it to somebody who doesn't mean anything? <laughs> I guess I can't say anything right now. Are you going to tell your mother about this? <laughs> Lisa, it would hurt her an awful lot. You know, you don't care about anybody but yourself. I realize now that your idea of loving a, a daughter is breaking her heart by sending her guy, her guy away. And loving your wife, oh, that's a good one. That's by having an affair with another woman. Great. Listen, listen, baby. No, 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 no. I don't have to listen to you anymore, okay? You don't have to tell me what to do with my life because I don't have a father anymore. You got that? Lisa. Lisa, honey. Lisa! Come back! I mean, if you want to stay here, I mean, that's fine, but the, the guest room's a mess. No, and... no, no. Um, I'm not talking about the guest room. I want to spend the night with you. I want to hold you, love you. I want to make love to you. Are you shocked? <laughs> I'm flattered and... and I'm shocked. <laughs> well, you know, when I first came back here, um, I was glad for you and Laurel that you were happy and... well, I was disappointed, too. Um, 
Bo and Woody were falling all over me, so I guess I put you out of my mind for a while. But after all we've been through in the past couple days, well, when I went over to Tracy's house, I knew that I wasn't going there looking for just an old friend. Am I making a fool out of myself? Oh, of course not. Should I leave? No, no, don't, no, Mimi, you got... <laughs> oh, you got to understand something. I have... I, I don't know how I feel. I don't... I haven't even allowed myself to think of another woman, not since Laurel died. But Laurel's gone, and I'm here. No, I know that sounds callous. No, it's... it's I understand. Well, and you're hurt, and you're all wound up inside, and... Well, I just... I want to love you the way you deserve to be loved. Oh, God. <laughs> Sometimes I have the worst timing. I'm sorry. I'm going to go home. I'll give you oh, a call. Wait a, a wait, wait a minute. Wait, don't I have the right to say something here? But you here? didn't say anything. Well, no, you've been saying it all just perfectly. And you're right, kiddo. You are right. I have been drowning in, in, in death and in misery. And, and you're offering me life and love baby I most gratefully accept. Well, ladies, I, uh, assume they told you about this, hmm? That's what you found in the closet? Mm -hmm. Did you look inside? No, 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 it's locked, and it's a pretty strong lock. Besides that, it's not mine to open. What do you suppose is in the box? No, I can't wait to find out. I have absolutely no desire to open that. Why not? Our father might have put some kind of treasure in there. Well, he certainly didn't want to share them if he locked them in that box and then bricked the wall around it. That doesn't matter now, Of he course said. it matters. Tina, good Lord. Haven't we had enough of father's secrets? Is that what you're afraid of? Tina, think about it. What if you open that box and find out he had 20 more children, all with the claim on this estate? Whatever it is, we were not supposed to find it, and I want that thing destroyed immediately. Vicki! Don't fight me on this, Tina. Too many demons have come out of that secret room already. Oh, I get it now. I'm supposed to be one of those demons, is that it? Yeah, well, my heritage might just be in that box. Now, why don't the two of you discuss this in the morning, when the world's brighter and you've had some sleep? Richard, there is no discussing this. I don't care what's in that box. I want it destroyed, and that's final. There's this haunting thing about it. And this kind of loneliness and... Oh. Well, I guess that's what it all came out of. 
Well, now, you know I don't mean that I could ever be lonely with you around. You know that. You happy? What kind of a question is that? Just answer it. There's something wrong, isn't there? You don't have to tell me what's bothering you. I just figured since both of us were cut off from the outside world, it might be a good idea if we continue to have this special... All right! Something is wrong. It doesn't mean I have to keep whining about it all the time, does it? I'm sorry. I am sorry. I don't know what I am saying. Maybe you do. No. Please, Jenny, believe me, it is not you. It is that. It is the music. I have been sitting here for months writing music for an audience that I know will never hear it. And it's hard, all right? So just chalk it up to a temporary temper tantrum. That's all. Your writing has been incredible. <sighs> David, listen. It is the best work of your life, and I understand you are doing this for the benefit of an ex-nun with a tin ear. Still my best audience. But that's not enough. I want everything for you because you're so talented. Hey, come on, what's the big deal about 3,000 people rising as one and shouting, bravo, huh? And you know what, I really mean that. That's not what I'm talking about here. I mean, the accolades are nice, but what I really long for is to be able to get the music out somehow and and, and know that it's being heard and appreciated. Hey, there really is no reason why my music can't be performed. Well, not while you're still alive. Wait a minute, wait a minute, think about it. I have to stay here cooped up under wraps, but my music can have a life of its own. No, don't do this. David, I would love for the, for the world to hear your music, but they can't. It is not worth risking your life for. The world is big, but he can't stay lost in it forever. He has beat us out so far. Look at him. Do you realize how many people know this face? Some would betray their country just to be this famous. And it is precisely that fame that will lead us to him. One false step, that is all we will need. <laughs> Actually, his best friend, Asa Buchanan, has already made that false step. If that is the case, we should have gotten a message from Craig in Landview. Oh, you know, Craig, that man is half cat. He doesn't believe in making a move until he can pounce. But I'm sure that it's only just a matter of time before he leads us to the maestro. And when he does... Dear oh, my cow. Very good. Mm. You know, you can feed me breakfast anytime you want. Mm. Especially if it's strawberry. Well, you can peel me a grape sometime. Mmm, you like that? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I like that, too. Oh, boy! Am I glad I found you again. Oh, me too. You know, it's really very ironic. When you think of everything that we've been through together, and then alone, and here we are together again, almost as if nothing ever happened. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, a lot of things have happened, and they can't be changed, and they can't be forgotten. I'm... I'm sorry. I shouldn't react that way. No, it's all right. I understand. You're all mixed up, and it's all right. It's just, uh, Mimi, I don't want to rush into anything. Mm -hmm. But I want you. I mean, I know that. That I know. I, I've known it for weeks. It's just that I, there's so many conflicts. Yeah, I understand. I want you to know something else. I don't regret for one minute what happened last night. Oh, sweetie, if I had thought there was a chance of that, 
I would never have gone through with last night. Dumping so much on you, I... No, no, you haven't. Listen, the important thing is that we're together now. And if it's something that we can build on, that's great. If not, I think it just has to happen by itself. You're one of a kind, kiddo. And I don't think it needed that explosion to get us this far, I think. I think this would have happened anyway. Mm. You know something? Mm. I think I could spend the whole morning like this. Well... Hell, I could spend the whole day. Why don't we? Well, my dear, because I've got a slew of patients who are anxious to see this smiling face of mine. Mm. Not the least of which is Asa. Well, his condition isn't serious, No, is no, no. I want to keep an eye on that rib, doll. It may not be serious now, but it could be if he doesn't take it easy. That's about as easy as a herd of wild elephants. We were sure lucky. You didn't realize that if that bomb had been stronger than one of Tracy and mm -hmm. Stig had planted? Oh, I don't even want to think about that. I keep wondering, though, what would have happened if that excitement hadn't taken... I mean, there was Vicky, there was Tina in the same room. I think there still would have been an explosion, but of a different kind. <laughs> You're right there. I'm sick and tired of playing these <laughs> what-makes-Tina-run yeah. games. You know, Vicky is perfectly willing to make any kind of settlement at all, any reasonable settlement. But no, Tina wants to go for the whole nickel. Well, my money is on Vicky. Yeah, I wouldn't be too sure, kiddo. And Tina's got a pretty good defense. What was that document that Victor Lord? I can't believe this. What? Well, I mean, I don't have much time before I go to the hospital. Why am I wasting it talking about Tina? Well, do you huh? have to go? I'm, can't you get somebody to cover for you? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Of course, I do have about an hour. Now, do you have any idea what we could do in an hour? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are regular customers. Hey, Rob. Hey, Josh. Good for promotion. Yeah. Right. We miss you around the hospital. I can see why. Yeah, look at this place. It's a madhouse. I got a convention. I got 12 business meetings. I got 56,000 things to sign, oh. and my manager just walked off on me. Watch out. I see some definite signs of burnout. Yeah. One thing is for sure. I cannot work here and at the hospital at the same time. Well, when we throw you a going away party? Wait a second. Excuse me. Dan, you got to take care of this. But save the balloons for the time being, all right? Because okay. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I actually like this. All the excitement and stuff like that, it keeps me hopping. It keeps the juices flowing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the cash register keeps well, ringing, too. The bread is not the only reason. You seen Lisa? Yeah, she's over there. Thanks, Dan. Ouch. Yeah, you're not telling me. She almost slapped me in the face when I said hello to her this morning. Yeah, I know what that's about. Look, I gotta go. I'm really busy. Danny, um, we gotta take care of these plants. I'll talk to you later, okay? All right, go. Don't burn it at both right. ends. You know, there's only one thing wrong about living in hotels. They're too public. Lisa, wait, please. Look, if you have something to say, write it down and send it up to my room. Listen, you're not going anywhere till I've had my say. Of my way, Josh. Lisa, please. Look, you have no more lines, okay? Understand? Now move. Come on, we've got to talk about last night. For what? Look, my father was having an affair with Stella, and you are the front man. I do not need an instant replay from a pimp. I had nothing to do with their affair. Oh, really now? So tell me why you tried so hard to keep me away from walking into the Waterside Inn. Okay, I admit, I didn't want you to see them, Lisa, but that was for you. I didn't want to hurt you. I didn't... Yeah, so how long have you known, huh? Tell me. About... A few weeks. I, a, a few weeks of the lying and the covering up and getting payoffs from my father, and you don't think that hurts. Of course it hurt, Lisa, but he never offered me a cent. Oh, no... really? Then why were you playing along with him? What did he offer you besides money, huh? Uh, uh, an entree into his illustrious world, or a few steps up the social ladder, maybe. No, no, you got it all wrong, Lisa. Oh, this no, is... Josh. I know you'd do anything to get ahead. Lisa, there was no deal between me and your father. I found out about him and Stella, and I knew that that would hurt you. And I, I see I was right. And you're trying to tell me if you had nothing to do with it. Lisa, please, you've got to believe me. Of course, it was, I had nothing to do with it. We've got a new florist coming in Good. within the hour. Ah, hey, hi. how are you? What are you doing here, not at the hospital? Well, my manager quit, so i got to take over. Oh, well, how's it going? I thought you said you didn't know anything about the hotel business. A contradiction. I used to not know. Now I know. I've been learning fast, right? <laughs> right. I like it, too. So what about medicine? Well, I think I'm going to stick that on the back burner for the time being. But I thought it's what you really wanted. Well, there are a lot of things I used to want. 
But you live and learn, right? Oh, yeah. So are you happy? Well, I'm busy. Danny, we got to take care of this. That's not what I asked you. We never were very direct with each other. Look, um, I'm real busy. Why don't you have a seat? Get anything you want, because it's on me. I'm the house, right? Thanks a lot. Yep. Yes, I believe there will be quite a few things to keep me busy here in Landview. Have you come up with anything? A number of interesting antiques, uh, but uh, I believe it's best to investigate the provinces. I realize you must be in a public place, Craig, but I must have some answers. What about Rinaldi's ex-wife, Dorian Lord? She is out of town. But I have found the next best thing. His daughter. Cassie. Trying to tell me is that you really had nothing to do with my father and Stella. Except for keeping the truth from you. Why don't you sit down there? I mean, maybe I was wrong, but I figured my best bet was to steer clear of the whole business. I mean, it's like dynamite, and the last thing I wanted was to get involved in their mess. And here I am, right in the middle of it. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe. Well, we're talking about a man that I always thought was like one step above perfection, you know, and then here I find out that he, he set up Bobby Blue and he's having an affair with another woman behind my mother's back. I know, I know, and I am sorry. So sorry. But Lisa, what about me? Can you forgive me? No hard feelings. Can we still be friends? Yes, sure, Josh. Okay, I gotta get back to the hospital. Would you call me if you need me? Call me, Lisa. Lisa. Hi. See, I would have come over before, but I saw you and Josh having a serious conversation, so... Yeah, well, I, I think we got it all straightened out now. You okay? I guess not. I'm so glad you came. Oh, honey. in time. Well, you'd hardly know this place almost went up in smoke. Well, I had the servants clear up all the rubble. We, after all, we couldn't have you staying at the land fair and having it be spoiled. Uh, why don't you have a seat? Would you like some coffee? Uh, just black, thanks. Well, frankly, I thought you'd be in bed all day with an ice pack. Uh, why? I mean, so my party was a social disaster, huh? I'll survive. Well, you say it didn't go over with a bang. Okay, no black humor. Mm. Now, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were this upset. Well, thank you, Richard. I'm glad you noticed. And most people seem to think I'm only worried about being a, a social butterfly. I saw how you reacted during the explosion, Tina. I could never think that. It was terrible. I mean, I kept seeing these awful images of all the people running around here and screaming and then seeing Asa and, and Cassie get hurt like hey, that. I couldn't sleep on, at all. Come on, you're taking this worse than I thought. Well, every time I closed my eyes, I kept seeing all this fire and smoke, and then when they brought those bodies up... <sighs> Look, you gotta let that go. No. Oh, Richard, it's because of me that they died. Because I had the electricity turned off in the secret room. They couldn't get <sighs> out. You're a hero, damn it. You saved every one of us. I never thought of it like that. Yeah, of course not. You're too busy thinking the worst of yourself. Well, it's because everybody else does. I mean, I can just hear what they're saying about town, huh? That, that my party was a total disaster, right? Will you forget about the party? You'll have others. Uh, besides, the major topic of conversation is probably that metal box that Ed Hall found in the secret room. Do you have any idea what could be in it? No, not really. But, you know, somehow I get the feeling it's a, a special gift from my father. Father I never knew. You're on a collision course, don't you? Everything about you reads self-destruct. The way you lashed out at Vicky, uh, the way you've uh, made a grab for Landfair. Right, for wanting what is rightfully mine? It's the way you've gone about it that bothers me. 
to do it every time I try to do it nicely, I just get stepped on. Are you sure you only want what's yours? Richard. Landfair is very special to me. It, it, it's the home and, uh, that I never had. I mean, all the time when I was a little kid, I used to think that I was just in the way all the time. That was until I found out who my real father was. I understand, Tina, but can you make up for lost time? Maybe not. And maybe I can't make up for a father I never had, but at least I will have something. The Lord Fortune, the estate. Well, why not? Vicky had it all her life. You know, it's my turn to enjoy it and to finally be my father's daughter. You know, it's funny. Vicky had too much of Victor's love and you had none at all. Do you really understand? Or are you just going to turn away from me? Because that's usually what happens when I'm honest. This time you're being honest with yourself. And I don't think that's happened too often. But to answer your question, I'll be there for you. And I'll give you advice when you want. But I promise to keep an open mind. And I owe the same to Vicky. That's okay with me. Thank you. I don't suppose I could uh, ask you to help me claim my father's box back. <laughs> no. Uh, that's one battle I think I'll stay out of. Yeah. It's just as well. I should handle it by myself. Because I have a feeling that it contains my father's last legacy. His only legacy to me. Father buried this box in the house Lord knows how many years ago. Obviously, he never meant for it to be found. We don't know what he meant, Vicki. All I know is I have this thing on my desk. Can we just forget we ever found it? No, not as long as there's a conflicting claim. Tina! Hasn't she caused us enough misery? She has legal rights. Look, uh, we, that might not be of anything of any interest in here at oh. all. Ed, come on. You knew my father. He had a reason for everything he did. Oh, I'm sorry, I understand, Vicky, but my hands are tied. Ed, please, I am begging you as a friend. My family has been through a living hell for a year because of my father's secrets. We might not survive another one, please. Please, Ed, give me the box and let me destroy it once and for all, please. You know, I would have hoped you would have found some kind of peace with your father's memory. At what cost? Oh, yeah. I've accepted the fact he was a philanderer. He rigged a special room so that he could spy on the whole house. And, and so he could have secret assignations and they seduced my best friend. Oh, Vicky, come on. I didn't mean to drag all that up. I know you didn't. I'm sorry. I loved my father very much, Ed. And I still love him. But the truth about him is pretty ugly. And it took me a full year to face it. That was one year of having my children shunted back and forth between my house and Asa's house and the ranch out west. All because I couldn't deal with what my father had done. All because we could not let them see what their mother had become. And Clint, my God, he went on trial for a murder. What if we hadn't found the real one? Ah, uh, but the point is, we did. Does that make it a happy ending? Are we supposed to forget the fact that he served time in prison? He was assaulted by other convicts, Ed. He spent every waking minute wondering whether or not he was going to be killed. Uh, Vicky, I do understand all of that, but I would love to see you put all that behind you. Then help me, please. Let me have that box so I can destroy it. Please. I'm sorry. You're, you're making some very big assumptions here. I mean, for all you know, there may be uh, some... some whole bullion in there, some precious jewels. I don't care. I don't care what's in that box. I would rather face the poorhouse than make my family be, be upset again. Please, Ed, my father reached back from the grave once before, and it came that close to destroying us. Please, please let us have some peace. Nikki, please. I, I, I owe you something. I mean, I was on the wrong side when I arrested Clint. I, I called you Nikki Smith when you weren't. Oh, I mean, I would give you the damn box if it left up to me, but as I tell you, it is police custody, and uh, I can't give it to you until you and Tina reach some kind of an agreement. Ed, 
Look, that box was buried in Landfair long before Tina came to town. Long before Tina laid any claim to Landfair. That doesn't make any difference. All right, then. What about my father's wishes? Obviously, he never wanted that to be found. Vicky, I can't second guess that. Are you telling me I have no voice in this? No, of course you do. And so does Tina. And by the way, uh, you're not the only one. Dorian? As Victor Lord's widow, Dorian has as much a stake in this decision as anybody head. else. And you are wrong. I am the only one who has any right to that, and I am here to claim my property. It's up to me. I would have given the box to Vicky a half an hour ago. But you're either going to have to work this out among yourselves, or you're going to have to let the courts work it out for you. Excuse me. Captain Hall. Well, uh, yeah. you certainly didn't waste any time, did you? Oh, Tina, this is crucial for both of us. What, more so for you than me? Right. Come on, I should have known you wouldn't waste any time in coming over here to well, claim what is not yours. Right, I'll, I'll come down as soon as I can. All right, thank you. Got to go down to ballistics for a little while. I'll be back as, uh, as soon as I can, all right? And I'll talk to you later. Yes, Before you start in again, Tina, before you start sniping, I would like you to recognize that what is contained in that box could very well change all of our lives. If we cannot behave like sisters, at least we can try and be civil. Fine. But don't try to talk me out of anything, because this is my birthright. <sighs> birthright? Do you know what our birthright is, Tina? It is lies and secrets. It was a mental illness for me and a desolate childhood for you. But we have survived that. Can we not finally bury our dead? That's real easy for you to say, Vicky, because you knew our father. I never even knew him. You found out enough about him, Tina. Good Lord, we discovered his underside together and it has torn us apart enough. Tina, we still have a lot of battles to fight. If you don't want it to get worse than it is, leave this box unopened. So what's the old myth, huh? Pandora's box? Open it up and all these hideous, terrible things come out? Well, somehow I don't see it that way. I see this as a wonderful gift to me from my father, the father that never gave me anything. After all the damage that he did you, what could possibly make up for it? I don't know, maybe there's a precious stone in here, huh? Oh, a rare coin, you know, it almost doesn't matter. Because what I'm hoping is that once in his life, he recognized me and he tried to make up for everything that he didn't give me that he gave you. For, for the schools, for, for the trips, for living in land fair. Let's face it, Vicky. You had it all. But this one, this one is for me. Do you really want the life that I grew up with, Tina? Have you taken a good look at me? Oh, I know you had your problems. And I am sorry for that. But at least that's more than you ever said for me. How can I possibly feel any pity for somebody who knows one word in her whole life? Grab. You grabbed my house, you grabbed my money, and you tried to grab my husband. Why? Because you are a poor, misunderstood little girl? Tina, face it. Our father never gave a damn about you. And you will never be happy until you face that. And you would really like me to believe that, wouldn't you? Do you think I like saying that about my father? Do you think I like feeling that way about my father? No, I don't, Tina, but I have come to accept that reality. Tina, you have to accept that. It's time, your time you stopped living in this stupid, wild, romantic fantasy. Don't you think I know why you don't want me to have this box? You don't want me to have this box because there might be something in it that might just mean my acceptance. Oh. You'd really hate that, would you? Oh, and you know what you'd really hate? Maybe there's like a little L pin in there of my own. You would really hate that one, wouldn't you? You don't listen, do you, Tina? You're not listening to anything I'm saying. Don't you realize what is in that box could hurt us? Don't you realize it could bring more shame to this family? Is that what you want? All I want is what is rightfully mine. That is all I have ever wanted, and that's exactly what I am going to get. You put that down, Tina. No, you just try and stop me. Think you would get away with that? Do you think the police or I would let you walk out of here with that? Why not? 
My attorney says that possession is nine-tenths of the law. Fine, let him prove that you own that. This was found in Landfair, and I own Landfair. You do not own Landfair, Tina. You are living there temporarily. Oh, and I am about to make some very permanent changes. You put one more paintbrush on one more wall, and I will have my lawyer slap you with a citation until we meet in court. And you just delay the inevitable. Tina, I grew up in that house. My children have lived their lives in that house. Every stick of furniture was willed to me, and by God, I'll get it all back. And you think everybody's just going to ignore Victor's final wish, is that it? Vicky, do I have to say this again to you? He said that if you ever became Nikki, everything goes to me, and that is exactly what happened. And whose fault is it that Nikki came back? It is one person's fault, yours. Oh, I see, so Nikki is all my fault now. You want an ugly fight, Tina? You've got it. Fine, you want to play hardball? Well, you've got that. You can forget about living in the carriage house, and you can forget any settlement, because I'm going to take everything in that house, including this box. You put it down, Tina. No, you get You're away from me. You're not going anywhere with the box, <laughs> Tina. Now, where do you think you're going? I want a requisition or whatever it takes for me to walk out of this with my own property. Put it down. No, I'm going to, if you don't help me, I'm just going to take care I of it said, myself. I put it down. I can slap you with a citation, you know. What? For taking what's mine? Mine, mine, mine. That's all you ever say. It's all you ever know. Oh, I see. You, you wanted that, that box, too, didn't because you? Because I have much more right to it than you ever had to anything in your whole life. Oh, hold it. Hold it right there. I thought I made it clear to both of you, this box is police property until its true owner can be determined. And you have no right to decide that. I have every right. You want to see the code? I'll be happy to show it to you. Ed, please, will you bear in mind what I said to you earlier? I do, Vicky, and I sympathize, but... I know, your hands are tied. Oh. Well, at least I know that my father's present to me is not going to be destroyed. A present to you, Tina? A present to you? Take my word for it. This is not a present. You think things are bad now? Wait till this box gets opened. We will determine that when Dorian gets back. Meanwhile... Thank you for hearing me out. That was your cue, too. Well, you heard Vicky out. Don't I get the same chance? I've got more important things to do than play what's in a box. Now, would you leave, please? Well, you just better take good care of that. Because I really wouldn't want to have to sue the police department for mishandling my property. For crying out loud, a man can't even read the financial section? You just want to check the latest on that stock that upset you so much earlier. I have a right to know where my money's going, don't I? Not if it upset you. You're supposed to be calm. You're recuperating. I want you to rest. Rest? I'll rest right to the poorhouse, all you care. Oh, I don't know if that'd be so terrible. Look at the nice life we had on Malakava. What about all the presents I said? What do you think, they grew on palm trees? I didn't care about the presents. It was you I cared about, you. Asa Jeb Stewart Buchanan. I still do. You mean that? Why in the world do you think I am here taking care of the world's biggest baby when I could be back on Malakava with all my school children? Baby? You are nothing but an old-fashioned school mom, straight out of the African Queen. Oh, really? And where does that make you, Asa? Bogart, don't flatter yourself. You are uncaring, selfish, ungiving. Egotistical. Egotistical, unpredictable, and a few other Grouchy. things. Grouchy. Grouchy. Well, thank you very much for letting me do my own scolding. I'm just trying to be cooperative. You, you are... You are such a big baby. That's the nicest thing you've said to me all day, oh. sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, I have to admit, we need a little bit of help on my bedside manner, don't I? No, honey, I think you make a great nurse. <laughs> you know, some we haven't laughed together like this since, I don't know. Yeah, it's been a long time. I miss it. <laughs> yeah. I miss the wife I used to know. I feel like you've been a stranger since you've been to Landview. And I know it's not entirely your fault. That's, let's not talk about that right now. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Fair enough. Now, give me back my no, paper. No, Come on. Listen, careful. You're back. You're not supposed to. Get back my you're paper. No, stop it. Stop it. Uh, oh, we got excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um. Hey, sir, we've got some business to discuss. And it looks to me like you're well enough for a fight. <clears throat> this rest, Richard. Uh, we've asked the hospital that there be no visitors. 
Well, in that case, I take back my challenge. Now, I, I promise I'll go easy on him. All I need is a few minutes. No, I'm sorry. I really Honey, it's okay. Yeah. There's nothing this boy could do to get me in an uproar. Hey, so I... Honey, do... fine. Just scoot. I'll be fine. Five minutes. Asa. Now, you know I dropped that David... Uh, a lot more pictures, a lot more national coverage. I mean, the whole paper has a much broader coverage than I remember. Well, <clears throat> I think you set some pretty high standards for all of us. You can check out the awards she's got around here. Yes, Joanne? Excuse me, sir, but Didi Buchanan is waiting to speak with you. Didi, put her on. Uh, what line she on? She's not on the phone. She's out here in reception. She's what? Shall I ask her to wait, or, or... No, no, uh, no, send her right in. Is there something wrong? Well, it's my sister-in-law. She's supposed to be on a, on a year-long honeymoon with a bow. I wonder what the hell is going on. Dee Dee. Clint, hi. Hi. <laughs> you look terrific. It's good to see you. How are you? How's Bo? Wait, 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 stop. Everything's fine. No, there's, there's nothing wrong. Well, what are you doing here? We didn't expect you back. I'll, I'll explain everything. Just, just give me a chance. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't want to break up a meeting. Oh, oh that's okay. Um, Clinton and I can see each other anytime. Uh, excuse me. Uh, my sister-in-law, Dee Dee Buchanan, Richard Abbott. Hi, Richard. I'm happy to meet you. Now, the pleasure's all mine. You know, Bo used to brag he was going to marry the prettiest girl in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Looks like he succeeded. Oh, so you know Bo, huh? Uh, Richard used to work for us here at the Banner several years ago. Oh, that's right. I remember hearing about you. Yeah, he uh, came back to help us out. We were just going over some changes. Oh, oh, oh well, that can wait. Uh, I'm sure the two of you want to get reacquainted. Oh, so. no, please. You, you can stay. Well, uh, come on, sit down. Okay. What time did you get in? Well, actually, I came here straight from the airport. I read about Asa in the newspaper in the cab coming over, and I wanted to stop here first and make sure that he was all right. Uh, take a bulldozer to keep him down. But he's in the hospital, isn't he? Yeah, and tearing the place apart, from what I hear. Uh, is that where Bo went? Uh, no. I, uh, I came here alone. Wait. No, no, no wait. Before, before you get all excited, everything is fine between us. It really is. Um, okay, where do I start? Uh... We were in Shanghai, and Bo met up with an old army buddy of his, a guy named Mike Harrington. And they started talking about another old buddy of theirs that was in the army with them, a guy named Jake McKenzie. Oh, uh, Jake McKenzie. Yeah, I did a feature on Vietnam for the French papers a couple of months ago about American POWs. Yeah, McKenzie uh, was one of them, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he was considered a war hero. Because he saved Bo and his whole platoon from a mortar attack, and he was captured in the process of that. Yeah, but later on, I heard there was a report that he died of malaria in a prison camp. Well, see, that's, that's not true. Um, Mike believes that he's alive. In fact, there's a rumor that there's a whole group of Americans that are still being held over there. And he also formed a corps of elite Vietnam vets that are going to go in and rescue them. And Bo joined them. Yeah. Now, he did all that undercover work the first time he was in Vietnam, and he knows all those special skills, he knows the people, he knows the language, and it's, it's not exactly like it's a combat situation mm -hmm. or anything. Like you're rationalizing. Well, I couldn't stop him. There's no way he'd ever, he'd ever have any peace knowing that he didn't help his friend who saved his life. And I, I didn't want him to go, but I, I had to let him. And you know something, Clint? I'm really so very proud of him. I'm proud of him, too. And I'm proud of you for letting him go. Well, breaking up the honeymoon wasn't the easiest thing I've ever had to do. And I miss him so much. I miss him more than I thought was even possible. Look, Dee Dee, he's going to come back. And you're going to have a plenty of time for a bunch of honeymoons. Oh, I promised I wasn't going to do this. We had, we had an incredible honeymoon in Europe. It was, it was wonderful and romantic and... Enough of that. So I want to know what's going on here. What's new in Landview? <laughs> <laughs> How much time you got? Yeah, nothing much goes on around here. You should know that. Yeah, unless, of course, you think it's news that uh, Clint just beat a murder rap. What? Yeah, Vicky just got out of a mental institution. And Larry Wallach was held captive by a crazed murderer. Landfair was bombed. Okay, okay. I'm trying to be serious. Come on, really. What's been going on here? <laughs> I don't think it's that big a story, Richard. 
I wouldn't give him more than a 12-point head. I disagree. I think it's the kind of story that grows, and I'd like to play it up a little more from day one. Okay. I bow to your opinion. So easily? Well, as long as you're sitting in for Vicky and me, uh, you make the decisions. You compromise, you wind up with mush. Right. Already compromised enough on that David Rinaldi piece. Yes, what made you decide not to run that? You were so hot to, uh, to build a major story. And I still can't figure out why everyone was so against it. And you, Vicky, Asa. It was Cassie who finally got through to me, though. And seeing her so vulnerable made me think twice about running it. I mean, basically, the story was unsubstantiated. Yeah, does that mean you tossed it in the circular file? Hell no. no I'm going to follow every lead that I can. And if that story turns out to be true, I'm going to print it, Cassie or no Cassie. Well, you know, I admire guts, but uh, some things are better off left uh, untouched. Well, that's hardly the flint-nosed editor I hear talking. Well, there's, uh, there's more to being an editor than being flint-nosed, you know. I mean, there's experience, there's maturity. Uh, don't misunderstand me. We're glad to have you around. I do have, uh, do have a question for you, though. What's a fellow like you doing sharing a house with a, a tramp like Tina? You and the entire Buchanan clan have it in for Tina. Uh, she's impetuous, uh -huh. a grasping, yeah. self-centered, uh -huh. and temperamental. Uh -huh. Now hold on, those aren't her only qualities. Well, I've been waiting for you to come up with one that would make you want to uh, <laughs> live around her, you know? And don't tell me it's her cooking. Well, she does have a pretty sensational French chef. Yes. Paid for with my wife's money, working in my wife's kitchen in my wife's house. Now, I'm aware of the dispute, and quite frankly, I'm trying to stay out of it. You know, I saw the sparks flying from the moment I arrived, and I decided right then and there my best game plan was none at all. Yeah, well, tell me something. Do you think that you can really keep an open mind living that close to her? I mean, I know she's got to be filling your mind with all kinds of uh, trash about me and Vicky. Now, come on. Remember, I know how to edit, remember? Yeah, and when I do edit out all the false claims and the self-defense, I'm left with a pretty interesting person. <laughs> no, I mean it, Clint. I mean, I see a kid who grew up thinking she was a nobody and had to fight like hell to get beyond that. Now, uh, deep down, she has a very low self-esteem. Yes, with very good reason. But why do you think she acts like that? I mean, she, she grew up without a father, was lied to all of her life, and when she finally finds out who she really is and what she was cheated out Oh, of, come on. I didn't figure you'd be such a bleeding heart. Granted, uh, she's not exactly a character from Little uh. Women. <laughs> and if you want to know the truth, I think what she did to you and Vicky stinks. Oh. Yeah, but none of this would have ever happened if, if Vicky had simply told her that she was her sister when they both found there out. There were a lot of reasons for that. I know. I know, and, and they were all very valid. I'm just trying to explain to you that there's a reason for all these lies and deceit. Uh, underneath it all, there's still that same kid trying to find out who she really is. Wow. You be careful, Richard. <clears throat> I know that Tina can uh, come off like she's very vulnerable. I know that from personal experience. I also know she can turn it on and off like a water faucet. Now, I don't expect her to be your enemy because she is mine. But be careful. I'm going to go over to the hospital and see Asa. I'll be back in a little while. Don't forget what I told you. Wheel of Fortune, 7.30 tonight. Oh, sweetheart, I didn't see you there. I thought you'd be at the banner all day with Richard. Uh, well, he's got a pretty good grip on things. I thought I'd let him coast while I go over to visit Ace at the hospital. I just stopped by to oh, there is. pick up this book that he was into before the accident. Take more than a book to keep Ace at <laughs> Yeah, I hear they've already dubbed him Wild Bill Buchanan of Landview <laughs> Hospital. So maybe uh, this will tame him down. If not, that staff's not going to get any rest at all. What's wrong? tired. I didn't sleep much last night. Sweetheart, 
You've got to get that damned metal box out of your mind. No. Look, there's nothing in it that can hurt us. Look what we've already been through. We survived. That's what I'm afraid of. How much more are we going to have to go through? I kept waking up last night in a cold sweat, and every time I went back to sleep, I kept having the same dream over and over again. It was awful. I mean, I know it was, it was just a dream. But the metal box is very real, and I'm so afraid that this time my father has left some terrible secret that really will destroy us. The first thing we are going to do is prove that you are the rightful owner of Landfair. And when we do, I am personally going to take that metal box and drop it in the middle of the Atlantic. I wish you could do that right now. Well, one thing I can do right now is promise you that nothing or nobody will ever, ever hurt you again. Put them right there. Oh, you can do better than that. <laughs>